This podcast brought to you by Best Day Brewing. If you guys like beer and you like the taste of beer, uh, but you don't want to get drunk, this is the beer for you because there's no alcohol in this beer. Yep. But good Lord, it tastes good. And you know what noise it makes when you open it? I feel like you make that sound different every time. I might, but I love cracking open a can. I love sitting in the green room with you and drinking a beer, even though I don't drink anymore. So I can sit there and pretend like we are cracking one open together. Uh, but Best Day Brewing, guys, if you like the taste of beer and you like the taste of good beer, but you're not a drinker anymore, this is the joint for I you. I feel it's un- like right under the surface all the time right now. My yeah. emotions are right there all of the time, and I don't know why. I think I do. It's because well, you're in tune with yourself. Like you feel and like- And you're purging. Yeah. You're, you're going you're, through something where your body- you're, You've been on this journey of self-discovery for a long time, Josh. Yeah. Since I first met you, you have morphed into a completely different human, but still the same Josh, if Mm -hmm. that makes sense. So you have been on this journey of self-discovery and you've been searching for something and I think you're finding it. And I think that, you know, you're, there's going to be so many more layers that you're going to peel back. It's like a fucking onion and you're going to be emotional through some of those roads you go down. What a crazy thing to discover at my age. I don't think we could have handled it if we discovered it earlier. I agree with you. Age is wisdom. (sighs) And it is like, that is one, that's like when people are like, oh my God, don't you wish you were younger? Absolutely fucking not. I love where we're at in life right now because we're willing to accept advice. We're willing to hear, we're willing to learn and we want to heal. And I have a different perspective on, I'm going to use the word flaws and failure, that those two words don't mean what people think they mean. Right. That failure isn't failure. Mm-mm. It's life. No, there's failure. no life without without something's going wrong, right? Without failure, we would never learn that lesson. One hundred percent. Yeah, and failure is not failure. It's just a lesson learned. That's Absolutely. all it is. Yeah. It's not. It's not something you didn't succeed at. It's something that you take a life lesson from and learn from it and put that towards succeeding in that the next time or other things in life. Are we it's, rolling? Because this is great. Actually, yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he was recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, all right. So we should probably introduce everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, start, hey, everybody. Hey, man. Hi. I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. And we are here for Hey, Man. We have uh, a guest today that I am so excited to talk to. Bunny is here. I We were just talking leading up into this. Yeah. And I- Heavy we, shit. We always get into these deep conversations. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you real quick, and I like to start these by giving people their flowers. I'm a dude who thinks you should tell people what you think about them while they're alive and in front of you. Yeah. I think that's important stuff. Oh, really? I just want to tell you how much, and I don't say this to a ton of people, how much in- respect true respect I have for you as a human. I want to tell you something that may sound small, but it isn't, especially in today's day and age. You know, one of the best things I can say about you, you listen. No, I appreciate it. I'll receive that because I've been told my whole life I don't. So I'll take it. I can, when I speak to you, Mm -hmm. I can see you and feel you present. Like you're interested, like you care, you listen. It's such an amazing thing. But I want to tell you, above all, what I respect about you is that, look, I know, and, and we're going to get into this, some of the stuff about how you grew up in I'm your sorry, life. Good but you, I respect this so much about people when you were like, this is not how you're going to define me. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. This is not how you're going to define. You don't get to decide. Who I am. Yes. Yeah. And that's such a powerful th- statement to make. And not a lot of people can do it and stand behind it. And you fucking stand behind it. You haven't, as you and Jay have gotten bigger, you haven't changed who you are. You haven't been like, oh, I don't, I shouldn't go on an interview. We shouldn't look like this or we shouldn't dress. You are unapologetically the two of you. And you in particular are still you. You're like, I'm separate from this. We love each other, but I'm this person. Yeah. I'm not his wife. I'm this person. Yeah. Thank and, you. And, I appreciate and that. I respect that so much. I, I want you to know, just coming in, I have so much respect for you as a person. I'm so looking forward to this interview. I'm 
just so happy to be here. You know, Josh, when I was first starting out with the podcast, you came on my podcast, no hesitation. And that has always stuck with me. And then after I met you too, and I got to be in your energy, I was like, dude, I fucking love this dude. And your wife. The best. I might, I might bang her one day. <laughs> we might bang. Listen, okay. I'm going to tell you right now, not against that. Okay. <laughs> 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 Except my hair and my chain won't be dangling in her face, okay? <laughs> or she'll love yeah. it if it is. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Yeah, sorry about that, dude. No, yeah, okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I will say, though, on that same note of, weirdly, my mother, and, and giving you your flowers, and we'll get into it a little later, but, you know, I, I, I feel relatable to you in a certain way because you really... You know, when you when you and Jay got together, you really came into a role and stepped up I into a position with uh, with with his kids, with, with obviously your kids. It's 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 very admirable and relatable because my mom did the same thing when I was four years old, and, and it's something that I really respect. And I think it's so important um, for people to see that it it doesn't matter what life throws at you, and you're mm -hmm. taking it in stride and loving everybody the way you do. And I, I think it's really respectable and it's very admirable. And I also relate to you as like, I, I'm not trying to be just known as his kid. Right. You know? So yeah, like, yeah. I, I really feel like that on the same length. So I just wanted to give you that up top as well and say it's it's very respectable and admirable for, for everything that you've done. All right, listen, I could sit here all day. Can I, <laughs> I mean, you guys just keep it coming. Can I, before no, we get I into appreciate your, that. Before we get into your child, can I ask you though, <clears throat> like when you decided you were going to step in the role of mom mm. did you and jay talk first and be like or did you talk like do you go directly to bailey and go this is my gonna be my role like mm. how do you how did you do that so okay um i'm gonna try to like put this into perspective as good as i can because you know at, when i was a child i didn't get the choice of like hey this is going to be your stepmom i was pretty much told like this is your stepmom and you have to call her mom and this is how it's going to be and i grew up in a very abusive household how old are you when five. You're five and as a five-year-old i felt that woman's energy and i told my dad please do not marry her please don't marry her i'm five years old begging him please don't marry her because I could feel her energy. The day that they got married, I tore apart my wedding dress that I was in. Like I literally was bucking the system at five years old. Wow. So that that's how much, and I lived a lifetime of heartache because of it. So whenever I came into Bailey's life, I had dated men who had children before. For some reason, I've always I have a thing for single dads because I had a single dad yeah, you know, right. raise oh, me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've always had um, you know, other children in my life, but not that I kind of like claimed as my own. And with Bailey, um, you know, Bailey's situation was unique. And I, I just want to be really sensitive talking about her trauma. Mm -hmm. You know, she grew up in a home with a drug addict mother and, you know, she had to grow up very early. And so we were kind of like all forced to be together because we had to emergency intervene. Um, her mom had, you know, robbed the house next door and they went to jail for it and they were going to do a really long bid. We were already making steps to get her in that moment, but this kind of like forced us to hurry to have to do it. So when we got Bailey, she was mad at us. Yeah. You know, yeah. she, you took me from my mom and I don't like you guys. And who are who is this guy? You know, like she knew Jay, but they weren't close. It was like a weekend dad and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So when Jay and I got married, the first conversation Bailey and I had was in a Burger King in like the middle of fucking, <laughs> I don't even know where, somewhere Tennessee. And she was like, so, and this is, she's a child. I'm talking like seven years old. She's like, so what are your intentions with my dad? Mm. And I was like, I said, I love him. And I was like, I just, I want to be with him, you know? And she was like, okay. And she's just looking at me across the table and she's just quizzing me. Your and little I, girls are smart. smart. But oh in that God. moment, that was my chance to make her feel comfortable like my stepmom never made me feel. You could see yourself in her. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, Bailey and I's lives have been so parallel. It's been insane. You know, this child has helped me heal so much. Like my own personal trauma, just Whoa. watching everything she's gone through. Yeah. And my main thing with Bailey is I've always just wanted her to feel safe. I've never told her to call me mom. That was a conversation we had in the very beginning. I said, Bailey, I love you. I will be bunny forever. Yeah. You never have to call me mom. So don't ever feel like you have to call me mom. She called me mom. She calls me mom on her own. Yeah. Like that is and that and every time she says it, it warms my heart mm -hmm. because she did that on her own. Yeah. You know? 
So from that first conversation, I remember Bailey has always been so headstrong and I think it was her first test for me, but she was like, what do you think I should get from the menu? And I was like, oh, you have to get an Oreo shake. We're at Burger King. And she's like, ew, I've never had an Oreo shake. I'll never try an Oreo shake. I was like, if you don't like it, throw it on the floor. That has always been my thing. If you don't like something, throw it on the floor. Like we, <laughs> to this day, that. to this day. <laughs> I wish you would have told me that growing up. That would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I promise you, you'll love it, you know? And she's like, okay. Cause she would, she's so set in her ways with her food and how she eats things. Mm -hmm. Like she's very particular. And I got her this Oreo shake and she absolutely loved it. And I think that was her way. Her Now she asks me, you can ask them, before she does anything new, she's like, mom, what do you think about this? Mom, do you think I'll like this? Like it's It kind of like set the precedence for our relationship where Bailey didn't trust women at all. And I had to really work and earn her trust. Yeah. Can I tell you, it's Beth has been important for countless mm -hmm. reasons. But yeah. for what she did, for the kids about providing a, a female role model, mm -hmm. which is important that you get a role model. I mean, obviously not everybody gets one of each, but if you right. can get one of each. Yeah. Right. And in a situation where she's thrust into, you know what she would say, because, you know, there were times where the kids were rough on her. Oh yeah. No, I get it. And she would go into the room and cry. Mm. And I would be like, do you want me to say something? And she'd say, it's not, it's my job to love them. It's not their job to love me. I just have to keep doing my job and showing up. Yeah. And eventually, all I can hope for is that they'll see that they're safe with me. Yes. And that's really the big thing that is, is that huge. kids don't feel safe, right? Yeah, they don't. And so she was like, eventually, they're going to feel safe with me, and they're going to realize they don't have to push me away. I'm not going anywhere. Right. Yeah. But it was really brutal to watch because- well, especially for you who is in the same situation, mm, yeah. probably part of the instinct is like, let me get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know, so when people like thank me for being there for Bailey and like, you know, the how sweet you guys are, like I've had a few people do that. I never did it for the thank yous. Like for to me, it was just what was right, I yeah. you know, and it's like you've got this little girl who is living a fucked up life right now because her mom has an addiction and she doesn't deserve that. This little girl deserves a chance, you know? And when we, when Jay and I first got custody of her, we were less than thou, you know? I was in the sex industry. Mm -hmm. I was no role model for a child at all. And, you know, Jay was just barely even making it with the music. And, <clears throat> you know, we were still, we had to fucking borrow money from people to pay our rent type situation sometimes, you know? So we've all had to like grow together and grow it's up amazing. together. Yeah. And it's been a really beautiful journey, but it has been hard. It hasn't always been beautiful. We went through some stuff with uh, Bailey last year, which she talks about on my podcast where, you know, her, her birth mother, um, you know, had her doing drugs with her and was at what age uh, they, they were doing drugs at what? 15. 14 and 15 she had her she was her mom was getting her drunk her mom was you know having her use illegal substances and crazy hiding it making her hide it from us and you know up until probably you know bailey and i have been getting we've always been getting closer and closer her and her dad have always been getting closer and closer but there was that one moment where i honestly feel like Bailey has finally let all of her walls down and we've had full custody of her for eight years now. It has taken eight years of yeah, hard yeah. work of just loving this child through everything to where we have finally felt like her walls have come down. Like even she's just a, a normal everyday, like she is like such a happy kid now. You know, you said something that sounds so simple, but it really isn't. And you just said by loving her through everything, mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. Look, there's no such thing as a perfect parent. And that's why I hate the parenting books. Yeah. And I hate the parenting experts. Yo, there's no such one size thing. fits all. Yeah. There's no, no, there's no one such thing as all. a parenting expert. You know, no. what, here's what the parenting experts should preach love, mm -hmm. uh, 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 understanding, pa patience, and understanding, respect. Mm -hmm. Here, also, here's yes. the deal, man. The goal as you get older, you realize you're never going to be happier. Mm -mm. 
than you are when you find out who you are. Right. And you and you allow yourself to be who you are. Absolutely. And so you want that for your kids. But the more you try to make your kids into something, instead of just going, what do you like to do? Right. The, the longer it'll take them to figure out who the fuck they are. Well, the problem is a lot of parents force what they want them to do exactly. onto the kids. Yep. And I actually had to, I have had to unlearn so many toxic traits from my childhood with Bailey. Like when we first had her in the picture, I was super strict because that's how I was raised, you know, and I needed that structure. Jay's super loose. He's fucking fun, dad. Yeah. You know, so it's like one of us has to be the, the you know, nope, this is how it's going to be. And the other one has to be like good cop, bad cop. Right, you know? right, right. But it's like most parents force their kids into being somebody who they're not. Yeah. And you have to kind of learn who your child is mm -hmm. and allow them to bloom into who they're going to be, even if it's not what your expectations exactly. are. Yeah. I, I saw it a lot growing up. There were, especially in like the sports teams that oh, yeah. you would coach or like when I went to high school. I could see the kids that were here and they were having fun and they asked their parents, hey, I want to do this. And then you would always see those one or two kids every year that was like, their dad was forcing them to play a sport because he didn't hit the the uh, the level that he wanted to. And he right. wants to live through his kid. Yes. But you're pushing your kid to do something that they may not even like to do, but they want to do it because they don't want to disappoint you. Yes. So there's that it's that vicious cycle of. And then they grow up of, with resentment. Yeah, correct. Right. There was a kid, by the way, on his baseball team growing up. <laughs> Which one? Uh, at Beeman Park. Uh, you were 11. There was this little kid who was clearly not made for sports oh, so that oh i team. hate he, that that's the worst he was in we'd put him in the outfield because they didn't want to get hit by the ball and he would pick flowers and he would chase butterflies oh we love him oh we did love him he, he was, was good kid. the best good kid his dad could not <laughs> get past super the, alpha right so the kid he was like let my son play in the infield i'm like this is not gonna be good oh no he was like he wants to play in the field tell him that. and i was like do you really want to play he's like yeah so I always, for me, it was always about my goal when I coached, you can ask him. My goal mm -hmm. was, I just want to make sure everybody has, wants to play next year. Yeah. Whether we win or not is fine. Yeah. But let's all have a good time. None of you are playing professional baseball. You all eat dicks. Yeah. We did. <laughs> <laughs> You're all <laughs> we, fucking terrible. You're right. So yeah. we did win every year though. But yeah, we did. Yeah. I will we say won that. because, so the kid was playing shortstop. Alex, you're going to love this. Kid was playing shortstop and he takes a ground ball and hits the chest. Mm -hmm. And you can hear, uh, you know, the when the, the wind, wind gets, knocks out. Uh, oh, no. So he falls down. The, the other kids gather around him. And uh, I run out there and his dad runs out there. Mm -hmm. So I run out first. I'm like, you okay? He's like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I'm like, you're okay, you're okay. Little lion, all the and, lamb. And his, yeah. <laughs> the, the dad always wore the short gym teacher oh tight not the clark bar trousers yeah, yeah, oh no tight. yeah with the baby bird peeking so, out oh, yeah 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 he little was, red snake he was down <laughs> like this and he's bending over his son oh and he goes come on and we're just gonna say his name was alex come on alex get up come on alex get up and then one of the other kids who had a limp and we'll just call him mr jones damn what kind of team was it and he goes <laughs> bad news bears he goes, <laughs> he goes mr jones i can see your penis <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, was, it was the whole team, me oh and Mr. Jones. God. That was the yeah. only. I Damn. just looked at him. I was like, maybe sweatpants tomorrow, no. dude. <laughs> yeah. And not the gray ones. No. But stop trying it's, to show the Clark bar yeah. off. Right? It's, it's crazy. We had yeah. a, we had a, we had the batch. They have no year. panties. No, dude, no, no, dude. He was commando. Baby he bird might as well have been wearing nest. a speedo or tidy whities. Oh, like God. it was bad. But this dude every year drafted a team of just straight bad news bears. Uh, me? You? Well, yeah, it. you. Because it <laughs> was like, great. give me all the rejects. That's yeah. what I wanted. Well, I because love Because it's that. crazy. He would take, because it's right. I, I remember those. But you make those, people feel good. Yeah, it's but I also remember good. those practices and those teams so vividly because there were kids on my teams every year. We had good players, but there was always, you always had the rejects. You always had the kids who were. Didn't know what hand the glove went on. Didn't, like, were forced ran to third weather. base first instead of running to first. I love that. All those kids. But you guys probably gave them so many core memories. That's oh, but, uh, yeah. well, yeah. I mean, the core memory was. Who cried when we won a championship. Crying, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, don't want to say, I don't say yeah. his name. I remember his name. There's no crying in baseball, but I. I cried a lot. We won a we won a lot of trophies, which was this little great, kid. But we always had the most fun. You turned kids who didn't want to play sports into kids who were like, I may not be a professional athlete, but I want to come try and play this next year. But well, they had fun, man. Dude, yeah. we always had fun. You always had 
tricks or uh, games for us to possibly uh, when possibly ice win some ice cream or uh, win like a pack I of baseball tell you something What kind of dad was Josh? Because I mean, I see the human that he is now. Yeah. And he just seems like such a sweet, fun, loving man. I can't see him being any different no i mean like look for me there look i'm not gonna say everything was perfect growing um, up yeah, there were perfect there, is never yeah yeah it's I, not yeah. a not a thing it's no, not a thing there were a no, couple times no. growing up there was one time in high school uh he made me switch schools halfway through my junior year so legit for my senior year i was at a completely different school none Ooh. of the friends i had made i was i was starting over and i remember when he switched me out of that school i didn't talk to him for two weeks no. him or my mom i would he would take me to school in the morning i would go to school i would come back i would go to my room and then dinner would be ready. I would come out, eat dinner, and then disappear for the rest of the night. That yeah. for a good two weeks. Like yeah, that may, might have been the first time in your life that we had really had a riff like that. Yeah, and then I got punched in the face to start of my second week. What were I, the good qualities about him? Good everything. <laughs> like like there were times, of course, where I was like upset for school or like I didn't make a sports team or things like that. Mm. And he would let me obviously feel my emotions because Aww, I think I think that's huge. It's huge. Like I think it's a big thing that parents don't understand. It's like you gotta let your kids yes. go through it. I've but, learned that with Bailey because I'm such a hard ass. It, it, so it's all. I'm always like, "What are you crying about? Stop yeah. crying!" But then now, like last night, I'm like, "Your your feelings are valid. Yeah. I, think I want you to admit you're upset." And then I'm like, "Who the fuck am I?" <laughs> you know, because yeah. I'm like so gangster about it. Yeah. I'm like, "Fuck it, fuck but that that's dude." How we you know? were raised, man. Yeah. yeah. When we were raised, and I've said this before, nobody asked us about our feelings ever. That you, was not something. Ever. It was not so, like, who, uh, if you cry, I'm gonna give you something to cry yeah, about. What, what are you crying yeah. about? Yeah. Well, let me ask you. before where did you grow up? Like did brothers, sisters, like what was the situation? Oh God. I am from an all American white trash family. Okay. <laughs> My dad was a musician, so he liked to spread a seed all over. He was yeah. a womanizer. Okay. So I have a half older brother. I have a half older sister from my mom. And then I have a half younger sister from my mom, my stepmom and my dad. So we're all half. None of us were raised with each other except for me and my little sister, which I left at 14. But I was born in Houston, grew up in Vegas. Um, Tell me about like, so your mom was out of the picture at what age? So my mom, so my dad was a musician, big, you know, kind of like a big deal back then. Um, and he and my mom was a stripper. They met and, you know, made me. My mom was just not she's an addict. So she just wasn't really made to be a mom. Mm -hmm. And my dad ended up getting like hepatitis from like, they tried to tell me now they're changing the story, but it, back then it was, he got hepatitis from shooting up cocaine. Mm -hmm. And now they're trying to tell me he got hepatitis B, but like, what would he be in the hospital for that yeah, for, for yeah, such yeah. a long time? You know, <laughs> I'm like, okay, whatever. Let's not fucking try to sugarcoat it now. Um, but she ended up dropping me off on a, a stranger's doorstep at three months old. And my dad, and she ran off with my dad's organ player and my dad, it took him two weeks to find me after he got out of the hospital. And when they found me, these people had me locked in a closet. Crazy, right? And I, I mean, I don't remember any of it. Right. I was a fucking baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I didn't talk to my mom again until I was 22 years old. Did you, growing up, were you curious about her? Oh, extremely curious. Um, I almost got kidnapped uh, the what? night of my parents' wedding. There was a woman that saw how mean my stepmom was being to me. And I remember she was so beautiful. She had blue eyes and black hair. And that's what my mom has is blue eyes and black hair. And she took me in the bathroom and she was like, is that lady being mean to you? And I'm like, mm -hmm. she's like, do you want to go home with me? And I was like, yep. And she literally tried to take me through the back of this venue while my parents were all partying. And my stepmom caught her and broke a fucking champagne glass over this girl's face and beat the dog shit out of her. This is the white trash family I'm telling you about. At their wedding is reception. This, Vegas? Uh, this is uh, Houston. Houston? Still. Yeah, we didn't move to Vegas till I was five. Um, so um, I, I, as a little girl, I thought that was my mom trying to steal me back. Oh. You know, so I was always very curious about her. I, and, at that age, I had never even seen a picture of my mom. So to know that she had black hair and blue eyes yeah. is crazy, yeah. right? And then I didn't see a picture of my mom until finally, you know, I was like uh, 21 years old. And my dad was getting on a plane and gave me a, a fucking whole bunch of pictures of me and my mom together growing up because he had to sneak around my stepmom. My stepmom, we were not allowed to talk about my mom in the house. Got it. And she, anytime she talked about my mom, she talked bad about my mom. And it was just like, 
it was a severe jealousy thing, yeah. you know? So, so did you growing up and, you, and when we talked about this early, earlier on, when you first sat down, like you probably did not feel safe as a child. Never. I never felt heard. I never felt like anybody cared. I grew up in a house where it was ch children should be seen, not heard. So, so, it was so sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Was that, so was that really important to you when, when Bailey came into your life was because obviously she, you said she healed some of your trauma, but mm -hmm. then obviously you saw yourself in her. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to give her everything that you weren't given growing everything. up, right? Yes, everything. My stepmom, I grew up in such a verbally, emotionally, and physically abusive house that all I grew up around was screaming and yelling. I've never yelled at Bailey. Mm. We got into our first argument ever last year. I mean, because she was in some serious shit, right. you know, but like I'd, I've never raised my voice at, at uh, Bailey. I've never raised my hand to her. Like I have completely everything that the woman put me through. I have made sure to not do with Bailey. What was your that. dad's reaction to like or the way how did he handle the way your stepmom treated you? Did you resent him? So I don't know if I knew that it was resentment um, until I got older, but it was more like I just felt like he did not care. Like he, yeah. I would come to him and be like, she's lying to you because she would never let me have a relationship with my dad. Having daddy daughter time, never got that with my dad. Like I was never allowed to be alone with him. Like she just controlled everything. Was she jealous of you, you think? I think so. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I like represented it. a re previous relationship and it's never the child's fault. No. We don't ask to fuck. I mean, we do technically we pick who our parents are before we come here but yep. that's a whole nother conversation right. but by it's the like, way i'm starting to believe that I, i'm telling you, you it's lessons that yep. you have that you're coming here that your soul wants to learn and yep. you're going to pick who you want your parents to be have you heard about that i don't think so tell yeah. them about it a little bit josh well uh, from what i understand like this is if you believe which i do there's only a certain amount of energy yeah right can't be destroyed created there's a certain yeah, amount of energy. it just morphs right just morphs mm -hmm. so when that's why i don't when people say God, what I hear is energy. Right. Right? Absolutely. When I, they say when people see God, he's a ball of light, which is energy. Yeah. And if you and if you don't believe in energy, all I could tell you is go to one of Jelly's concerts mm. and listen to them sing back to him mm -hmm. and tell me you don't feel that energy. That's energy that's filling you up. Mm. So that comes in all forms. Good. I'm sure you have. You ever felt somebody walk into a room and be like, Got to get out of here. That's not the person. Oh, yeah. Yes. No, I, all the time. That's I'm not like the person that. I oh, want to be. Right? Yeah. So if you take that idea that we're all energy, you're just constantly coming back. Transferring. Transferring. And you are coming back to learn different lessons or to me, mm -hmm. sometimes you come back so you can be the person who that another person learns a lesson from. Absolutely. Yeah. Karmic. A, a so karmic I really cycle. do believe that too. Like sometimes I believe that something bad somebody comes back on purpose to not be great to you mm -hmm. to and, and or or well, to not to put something in your path that you have to learn from that is not great well until you learn that lesson it's going to come back to you in a different situation person mm -hmm. body whatever it will come to you over and over again until you actually pass that lesson and learn that lesson Looking back on your childhood, and I do have some more questions about growing up, but do you, are you in a forgiveness stage? I am. So I got to inherit custody of my mom last year before she died. Uh, I'm sorry, two years ago, 2022. I always say last year because she died in November of 2022. Yeah. Um, but April of 2022. So I, I my mom found me on AOL chat when I was 22 <laughs> and she hit messages me and she's like, Hey, I'm your mom. And I'm like, go fuck yourself. Can I ask why <laughs> you have AOL still? I mean, no, <laughs> when I was 22, when I was 22, oh, okay. listen, <laughs> stop trying to date me. All right. Hey, hey, you, you're putting, you're you letting said, people know how old the, I am. Wait, Beth, Beth, you, I was going to say, you say my, that, but mom Beth has, still has Beth an AOL, has an AOL, AOL. email. <laughs> I love that. She's Even had more an reasons AOL why I've been a boner. Yeah, where are you going to get that chain a little longer? Yeah. <laughs> and the hair. The hair, for yeah. sure. I think you might have longer hair on yeah. top than I do. Um, so I, I was in an AOL chat room when I was 22. My mom fucking popped up on the screen. She was like, hey, um, I'm your mom. And I'm like, go fuck yourself. And then it actually ended up really being my mom. So we, so we ended up having a relationship online for like 15 years. I didn't get to me physically meet my mother until I was 36 years old. Wow. 
She's such an addict. She didn't want to leave the house. Yeah, you know? right. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, you're good. When, when you did find out that that was your mother, was obviously there was some sort of resentment, but also you were intrigued. Like, what was your first thought when you guys kept a relationship for 15 years? Like, was was it something that you were just kind of doing because you were like, I might as well just see where it goes? Or were you purposefully trying to rebuild at that point in time in your life? So with my dad and my mom, and that was leading up to tell you about my forgiveness stage, yeah. but with my dad and my mom, I have always been able to see the bigger picture. It's so weird. Leaving home at 14, I left because there was a bunch of people who were giving me examples of what I didn't want to be. Mm. And I knew that at 14 years old, I was like, I can do so much better. I left home at 14. I haven't gotten a dollar from my family or anything since I was 14 years old. I did everything on my own because I knew that there was a better life. Mm. And um, I'm sorry, what was the question though? I, I was I was leading up to that. Um, oh, was I trying to, so yeah. I was able to move forward with my family realizing like, yeah, of course I was mad at my dad for a little bit in my early twenties. I didn't talk to him for like probably almost 10 years because I was mad at him mm -hmm. and I cut him off. But during that 10 years, I was building my relationship with my mom who, I immediately learned that she was a drug addict and she was going to be a huge fucking disappointment. And then I also reconnected with my older sister who was a drug addict and a fucking disappointment, you know? So I looked at it as like, I've always like loved studying people's psyche and like what makes them. So I wanted to know like, what happened to you? Like what, I want to know about your childhood. Like my older sister, what happened to you and mom? Like I've always tried to like kind of piece together the pieces. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't me like trying to rebuild. It was me trying to understand, you right, know, okay. like everything that they had been through. And then, um, like I said, I got custody of my mom last year, April of 2022. They called me and because I met my mom finally at 36. And then one thing about my mom, like even when I was going through like my addiction myself when I was addicted to cocaine and Xanax, I would call her and I would take it out on her. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, I don't want to be like you. And I would cry and I would cuss her out. And at every time that would happen, she would just listen to me and she would never get mad at me. And she would always say, honey, I love you. That's huge. You're going to make huge. it through. And I never got that from my dad, Ow, you yeah. know? So it was like, it was really cool. We had a really weird fucked up relationship, but when I really needed my mom the most, she was always there for me. Can I ask you a question? Me a question? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I don't think I've ever asked you this. It's another similarity that you two have because you don't talk to your biological mom. No, I do not. Mm. And I, I, last week I said to you, you know, forgiveness isn't about the other person. Yeah, it's for it's you. A, it's for you to yeah. let go of that energy. To not have it on, and you Absolutely. don't even have to tell them that you forgive them. No. If you don't want to give them that. You can forgive somebody and still have boundaries. Yes. Yeah. And I asked you, do you ever think about forgiving your biological mom? And you said, I'm, I don't, I don't want to. And I, you almost said, I don't want to get rid of the energy, but I'm so curious how, like how pre talking to her and post, does it feel like a weight was lifted? I was never mad at my mom. Mm. I was never mad at her. Like my real mom, I never was mad at her. Is that because she, she, she wasn't there to be mad at? Right. I didn't yeah. know what it was like to have a mom. So it's not like she was a great mother and then left. And I was like, oh my God, how, did, how could you do that to me? Right. You were never there for me. So I don't know what a great mother is. The only example I had of a mother was an abusive fucking hell on heels woman, you know? So I was never mad at her. I was more mad at my dad, yeah. you know, but he was never a great dad either. Why do you, why are you mad at your mom? I think for me, it's like my, like with my two siblings, they did spend some time living up there uh, in, uh, in Washington with her. I never did. I stayed here. I stayed in LA with my mom, my mom and my dad. Well, you weren't a. I wasn't. Was, I was. You were the only one I had full custody of. So yeah. it wasn't like there was an. Did you fight right. for what? Give me a little synopsis of the story. So. You know, I met a woman, she had two kids. Mm -hmm. We had Jacob together. When when we split up, I kept the kids for a little bit. And all then of all, all of them. Yes. Okay. And then um when I met Beth, she was like, Hey, I'm come I'm taking the two older kids. She didn't want them around Beth. It was like a and by the way, I I don't okay. I, I generally don't don't talk about her because she's a private person. And I want to cast no aspersions on her because as I've gotten older, and I've said this a million times, I realized 
I don't look at people as good and bad parents anymore. People right. generally do the best they can. Right. Well, how, what they know. And yeah. I and she had a very rough childhood. Yeah. yeah. Very physically, sexually, emotionally abusive. Mm. And she did the best she could. I, I I will never say anything. You've never heard me say a bad thing about her. Not a single yeah. thing. She's she did the very best that she could. Mm. Um, but so when. Uh, she called and she grabbed the two oldest kids for a little bit. What was her reasoning for not taking Jacob? I went to court. And when we went to court, okay. served her. she never showed up. Yeah. Okay. So do you think in return that has made you have an abandonment wound? Oh, I think I definitely have the abandonment issue. Um, even with, even Beth, with my, my mom, oh, my your mom. mom. Yeah. yeah. Even so, with, yeah. even with my mom, like she has, Filled every single void I could ever ask to be filled for not having my biological mother in the picture. But I think for what it what it is for me is that not only is it like my trial, childhood trauma, it's also seeing what trauma she caused my siblings. Right. I think is also something. And it's like I get defensive over my people. Because it's that. like I see who they were when I was growing up with them. Oh, yeah. And to see what tough. has unfolded is tough for me because those are my those are my my brother and my sister and yeah. for me when i see siblings you know and siblings go through trauma they they bond and no. i think only through our trauma i've seen us grow separately that's yeah. really and, rough and, for me and it's it's rough for me too and also for me also like oh, i cast me. most of that's my blame onto her because we tried to come back after after they left the house my brother went to the army and my sister came back down to la she was by herself and it finally, she was like, oh, yeah, it's giving me a time to to change and this and that. And so I went out to dinner with her. I walked her down the aisle at her re I, when she got remarried. Like I was the oh, me and my sister were the only two people to show up for her at that new wedding. And then for her to just fucking throw it all away again without you How like trying. It's so important to learn to give oh. people grace, dude. And so, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It really is important to learn to give people grace. And also you have to learn to love them, not for who you expect them yeah. to be, but who yeah. they really are. Yeah. That has been a huge, I had to love my mom for the addict that she was. Yeah. And, and if you, and if you go, oh, this is who the person is, you can't be disappointed anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the big thing. Like a which lot of it times. Takes it, that's where the wisdom comes yep, in. Right. Yep. And that was hard. For, not, that was something I understood with my buddy Jackson. Like his best friend, my best, died. my best friend, uh, oh. passed away about five years ago. That's um, traumatic also. Extremely. I was, I just turned 21. He didn't even make it to 21. Um, it, that was something for me that as he was going through his, his demons and going through whatever he had, or he, before, even before that, he was a very like flaky guy where he'd make plans, but then not respond or say mm -hmm. he's doing something else. And that would frustrate the hell out of me. Yeah. But he one day looked at me and he was like, Hey man, do you like having fun with him? I was like, dude, he's my best friend. And he's like, okay when are you going to start not getting mad when you know what's going to happen? And I was like, huh. And he's like, you start accepting him for who he is. Cause even though he flakes, he's still the same dude. Mm -hmm. You just got to stop with that expectation. And you're I was actually like, getting okay. mad at yourself. Correct. Is what's happening. Correct. Mm -hmm. You're, you're mad at yourself for falling for it again, but don't right. put yourself in that. You're, you're actually doing a disservice to your friend for putting them in a position, you know, they can't handle But His friend yeah. was also triggering his abandonment wound. For sure. For sure. Yeah. For and, but sure. I, I, yeah, I think the, I think the biggest thing though, for, for my biological mother is that like on both sides, there was a concerted effort on her side, on my side to try and, to try and hash this out. And then a lot of hashing out. It's yeah. It's going to take more than yeah. just. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. I, she flew down to LA. We had dinner with me, her and my ex at the time. She was the first, my, that, that ex-girlfriend at the time was the first any one of my friends, my people to ever meet my biological mother. Right. Took a photo together. It was a great dinner. Like we had a great time. I walked her down the aisle at her wedding. Like I was, I was, I was for sure being the bigger person and trying to put my best foot forward to maybe not, I'm probably never going to call her or never thinking I was going to call her mom again, but I was, you know, trying to make sure that this relationship doesn't die. And then one year she yeah, I'm not going to get into it, but said something that didn't happen. And then it just kind of like, it just, it was a final straw for, for me and my siblings. And then I think also what it was is, was, uh, it just felt like she gave up. It just felt like she gave up on me and my siblings because there was reaching out for birthdays and for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. And then all of a sudden it just stopped. And it's like, she just gave up on trying to have a relationship with 
her three kids and it just I don't know it's such a sour taste in my mouth and it's like I understand that she had issues and she had problems and she's still working through them and and doing the best that she could mm -hmm. but for me and for and for who I am and what I was going through it was best for me to just like I just can't I just can't put any energy into it I can't think about it it's just gonna drive me fucking insane right, hurts. my question hurts. is why can I tell like, you why did you give up why so you interesting you brought up abandonment on him a couple times and it finally has made sense something about you, dude, that I've always wondered where you got because I'm not that dude and your mom's not that person. Always been that dude. You draw hard lines. Always. Well, yeah. Because the hard line means I'm not giving you a chance to hurt, to me, hurt again. me again. Yeah. I had never thought about but you are a hard line driving. I'm the same way. I'm the same. I've always been like that. Now I'm way more lenient and yeah. flexible. Yeah, but me too. <laughs> growing up, it was my way or the no, or, or the highway. Yeah. And like, you're not going to, I wouldn't let anybody, I would hurt myself before I would let somebody else yeah, hurt me. Absolutely. I, I was just, I'm trying to protect myself I because like, you know, we talk about being too nice or too kind to people, right? Like being nice and being too nice yeah. and being walked over. Right. Yeah. I very early knew my worth and I knew what my time was worth and what my friendship was worth and what who I am was worth. And so mm -hmm. I didn't want to waste time with people who didn't notice that. Same reason why I left home at 14. Okay. So let me get back to this for a second. Before we get back to you leaving home, you're up until that point. How did they parent you? Were you under lock and key? Was it very strict? Could you come and go? Like, what was the house like? So, Any joy at all? No. And that, and writing this book has really showed me that I really did not have a childhood. Um, I was always – it was so what had happened was when my dad and her got married, they were it was partying all the time, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. There was porn on the TV. They would have parties all the time. Like, it was crazy. You in the house? Me in the house. Mm -hmm. I would walk in and porn would just be playing on the TV. Like, it was fucking – it was the 80s, all yeah. right? <laughs> Bush it all. Bush. <laughs> Oh, we were Bush talking about a Bush conversation Bush. two days ago. That's why I hate Bush to this day. We just had a Bush conversation two days we ago. We did. We totally Bush is not in office. <laughs> All right, fucking not dealing with it, dude. And I was telling him we were, because we had a conversation. I was like, I think crabs are extinct now because there's no no, no hair. There, <laughs> yeah, there is no yeah. there's no bushes. No, it's just morphed into other things but like yeah, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> trauma or something well like, that too but other stds i told i i was like have you seen he was like i he was like i saw a movie where like a woman wears an, wearing underwear but she, it was just sticking out the side oh, she, like, she, like, 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 she, like, she had like she had two froze it was crazy she had the curl and then curls and i was like what is going on what like, are you watching i don't know i was watching a tv show i don't remember what came family out. guy probably yeah, yeah it was more bush than woman i was Good really stunned Lord. i was like what is Yes. Oh, so Nothing hot about something. having to dig for the lips. I don't yeah, like this, it. This situation, <laughs> when you are when you got the machete out and you're yeah, going just in. Yeah, fucking like, mowing the lawn. It, Can't but do I, it. but the, the Bush combo of the dude Bush on top of the woman Bush was like, you guys Friction. are a forest fire. Literally, you are happen. fucking, that's like caveman shit. Like, yeah. This is how you're trying to stay warm. I think that's Sparks. how they invented dreadlocks. Sparks flying. Is that is that the pubes just all came together and kind of locked in and you were like, well, I guess I'm stuck with you yeah. now. Oh, no. It's like a, it's like a genital like, Chinese here. finger trap. Yeah. God, yeah, literally. Oh my God, that is so funny. So Gross. We, did, no joy. Do you did you so have, did it, you have like, friends that came over? Did, um, were friends allowed in your house? Did you go to other people's houses? Did so, you have friends come over and be like, "What the fuck is happening over yes. here?" So <laughs> plot twist: grew up sex, drugs, rock and roll. My dad, I believe, Bill, don't hate me for this, got caught having an affair. And we did a complete fucking 180 and it was church. So we became cult. Like I had to wear dresses down to my ankles. Get. Fucking Whoa. wasn't allowed to listen to secular music that I grew up on. Wasn't had to go to church three to four times a week. Church camps. Like it was like. How old? Tw uh, when did that happen? Probably I'd have to say like eight. Whoa. Eight, so nine. So young. Yeah. So like I went from you know, the rock star lifestyle to literally having to fucking just be like, Jesus, like just mind my P's and Q's. Stepmom was like, was in on it too? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Was, was she it the was one like, that brought it, brought it to fruition? I think so. I think that's what happened. It was her way of being able to control my dad. Yeah. You know, like you got caught doing this, so this is what we have to do. And so like, I 
wasn't really allowed to do much. I had a younger sister that I ha always had to take care of. And it just, it was. Have you always I, been a grown up? I, yeah, literally. And I always had to do, I had chores. I had to learn a piano song a day to the beatbox. If I didn't learn that, I would have to, I'd be grounded. Like I had to mow the lawn and weed eat at Me fucking too. nine years old, nine, 10 years old. Like who the fuck is doing that? I had to go pick up dog poop with barbecue tongs. Like it was <laughs> cruel. It was cruel shit. Who gives their kid barbecue? Like give them a shovel. <laughs> Wait a second. Not fucking barbecue tongs where Can you have to pick up one log. Can I ask you another question? At a time. Not just who uses barbecue tongs. Who the fuck reuses those barbecue tongs for your barbecue? It was our poop tongs. Yeah. Oh, okay. the poop tongs. So you guys oh, didn't wash Okay, oh, no. okay, okay. All right, good, good, good. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I was like, Did that would be... Well, this dude always told me, he was like, he's like, you guys are so lucky. Back in my day, I used to lay cement as a 14-year-old. I'm like... <laughs> 14, but 16. Here's yeah, my I thing. Though. Here's, I had here's, jobs. I believe like, Okay, it. but here's my yeah. question. First of all, who's trusting a 16-year-old to lay cement evenly? Dumb I mean, people. back in the day, there was no child labor laws. Thank you. Yeah. I got my first job when I was 13 years old. Yeah. I, I, my dad was like, hey, you're getting a job. You Mine want money? Mine was at 14, Fat he was Burger. Like, I, I, I washed dishes. Yeah. By the way, Fat Burger. Delicious. So good. I know. We had it, and I hate that they didn't get to try it good because they didn't love it, but when it's fresh, it's so good. So yeah, when it's good. Fat Burger is legit. Mm -hmm. Are we going to call it fast food? It's definitely fast I food. I mean, it's definitely fast food, but I, it's high upper echelon. I will say, though, I feel like it's a little overpriced for what I'm getting. Right. I feel like you know? I, I feel like it's yo, I'm going in there and spending twenty dollars on a double on like a pretty much a, a, a double cheeseburger with fries and a drink. Did I hell ever, no. Did like, I ever tell you the story? That's dude. crazy. You know the fat burger on Ventura and Beverly Glen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Beth was out of town. And I oh my God. I was I was like, I'm gonna get high and go to a movie. I, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> You know what I mean? I, no wife, no nothing. I can just get high. She doesn't want to see Spider Man. I'm right. going to get high and yeah. go see Spider. I'm going to go to Fat Burger. So I park in the parking lot and I'm puffing up and I'm already kind of high. And there are, I'm parked this way facing Fat Burger and there are cars facing me and there are people in the cars. And I'm like, what are these people? Why are they just sitting in a parking lot and they're staring at me smoking? And I'm in LA. So I'm like, I know it's, not legal, but it's not illegal. Right. So I'm, I'm blowing, blowing it and laughing. <laughs> and then I hear kids. And I'm like, what? And I turn behind me. There is a church behind me. School's letting out. I'm in the legit Cheech and Chong car. Smoke <laughs> flying out of both windows. So I roll up the windows. And the car is filled with smoke because I, I don't have anywhere to put it out. Mm -hmm. So it's just filled with smoke. And I hear this kid walk by and I can't see him because of the smoke. And I just hear, mommy, I think that car's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Is that is amazing. Yeah, dude, but I, <laughs> mommy, I think that car's on fire. When I She's like, no, honey, car. just don't look over there. <laughs> Over there. <laughs> that is so funny. When I got out of that car, man, I heard someone from the church go, hey, maybe a different spot next time, dude. I'm like, yeah, my bad. Yeah, sorry about that. That is funny. Um, any, like, you know, I, I tell them about things that we did when we were kids. Mm -hmm. Like, I told them a story about, we used to go down to my basement and turn out the lights. We'd each grab three darts and throw them. Animals. In whatever direction and just try to hit. Oh, right? okay. No like, target. No, the no, middle, no, no. no, they were lights aiming out, for we're each aiming other. And so you lights out, count to three, and then just start whipping the darts. Wow. Can you so dumb. Can you think of anything from your childhood that was just something that kids did or no big deal? We used to play in forts. Yeah. So I grew up in Vegas. So th there was like desert and oh, we yeah. used to, they used to have these huge like thorn bushes that we would hollow out and make forts that we could go look Whoa. at porn magazines in and fucking do weird <laughs> shit. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Porn magazines. That's yeah. all that was, dude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah he, he talks about how I he used to find- like playboys in the bathroom. Like that was the oh, era yeah, that yeah, I yeah. grew up. But, yeah. Like, you know, your dad had playboys in the bathroom. I don't know. If, maybe no, it was he just definitely mine. didn't. My, yeah. <laughs> my, look, the, we used to find magazines in the woods, like right. under a rock. It was probably one of mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, so at 14, what's the inciting incident for you to be like, you know what? I'm getting the fuck out of here. Um, my mom, my stepmom put her hands on me one last time and I fought back. Mm. Um, I got tired of it. She put my head through a door. And I mean, she's a 5'10", big, busty, fucking blonde cowgirl. You know, mm -hmm. like she's pretty fucking tough. 
And I think that's why I'm as tough as I am now is because, you know, I had to live through that. And I finally just laid it on her. You know, I'm 14 years old and I was just like, I'm not going to fucking keep growing up in a house where I fucking have to fight to, to live. Just live. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to leave. And, you know, that time my parents had already took my door off the hinges, put bells on the door, nailed my windows shut. They had done. You were sneaking in and out. I was, yeah, I was leaving. I was, you know, after you go through so much abuse as a child, you get to a point where you're like, if I'm going to be the bad guy, I'm just going to be the bad guy. Yeah. Like my, my stepmom gave me no privacy. And I remember one time she like tried to accuse me of being on drugs. So I took a fucking bag of flour and hid it in my room just to fuck with her. And I mean, it looked like a fucking kilo of cocaine. I love like anybody that. in the fucking yeah. world would know that it wasn't cocaine. And she's like, yeah. Mill, look what your daughter's doing, you know? And I'm just like, she's you. baking pies. Yeah, like, but she's like, she's got cocaine. And I'm just like, oh my God. But yeah, so that's how it got. And it just got to the point where one night I just literally threw all my clothes in trash bags. And to this day when I move, I still throw everything in trash bags. No matter how much For fucking real? money I have, I throw everything in trash Trash bags. Literally. I threw all my shit in trash bags, Amazing. unscrewed the fucking screw in my window. My girlfriend was waiting around the corner, threw my clothes out, left, and never went back. So where did you go? Where did you go after that? So I I walked to the street of Vegas that night because I really hadn't didn't have a plan. And I was just like, I need to do something. So my best friend Tasha, who I love her so much, her family took me in at their trailer park that um, you know, she grew up in and I moved into the trailer with them for a little bit. I ended up getting my first job and then I had my own apartment by the time I was 16 ish, 17. But I lived with, you know, boyfriends off and on mm -hmm. and kind of just hopped around. I couch hopped for a long time, but a lot of families and I actually and I'm going to tell the story, not because I want the praise for it, but because this is um, how much these people mean to me. One of the mothers of one of my best friends, Michelle, her mom just passed away. Mm -hmm. And my way of being able to say thank you to her was to pay for her funeral mm -hmm. and to go out there and send her off in the most beautiful funeral that I could because she was the first woman who ever showed me kindness and loved me no matter what and took me in and was like, you know, where are you going? What are you doing? You can stay here. I had her house shot up and everything. And the woman still loved me. What do you mean shot up? <laughs> I, you know, I've always loved a gangster. Yeah. Too. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, one night, one of them were pissed off, and, you know, shots got fired, windows got broken, and stuff like that. Her dad ran out in his tidy whities. That's the, I saw That's him. That's the best part. I literally saw him at the funeral, and I was like, hi, Carlos. And he didn't recognize me because I look so different. And I was like, it's Alyssa. I was like, I'm the one who got your house shot up. He's like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> I was I like, how that. you doing, Carlos? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Do I love the image because it, I've been that dude, man startled awake in the middle of the yeah, night. Yeah, just in his tidy whities. In his oh, tidy whities. Yeah. I got I kind have, of the bewilderment yeah. on his face. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Puerto Rican, <laughs> so just many. with a gun in his hand. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> so many memories of tidy yeah. whitey Josh Wolf. Yo, are you yeah. a tidy yeah. whitey? Yeah, not dude? anymore. No. Uh, I don't wear tidy whities. They're not white, but they're the same style. Oh, no. These are, they're called boxer briefs. No, I'm not I, wearing bikini okay, briefs. I wear okay. boxer briefs. Some of those are not boxers. No, you wear boxers. I no, wear boxer I don't, briefs. I don't, the, I don't wear the baggy boxers. Don't make boxers. me take my pants off. You want to you you compare take underwear off. right now? Take them off. You want to compare underwear right they now? They go yeah, down do it. here. Let's do it. Turn them off. Take them off. We're comparing underwear. All right, I've always wanted to get father and son naked, so here's my opportunity. My buddy used to go, he used to say, do you know why I'd want to be a rock star? I'm like, why? And he'd go, I'd want to, I want to pull the calf cow. I'm like, what's the calf cow? And he's like, mother daughter. I'm like, the oh. calf cow. Calf cow he is was foul. Like, he was like, that's rough. That's he was like, he was like, rock stars are the only people that can pull that off our calf. Rough. Calf that's, cow is a terrible. Saying thing. it is calf cow is foul. I'm like, never that's, gonna that's, forget that. <laughs> wild. That is wild. The never calf, gonna forget that. Calf cow. My favorite Joshua. We won't call it tidy whitey, but Joshua in his underwear memory was my 17th birthday. Oh no. I remember it. Well, you remember this too because it was. I remember the exact day. It was March 17, 2014. There was a, there was an earthquake on my birthday morning. Oh God! And it shook the, it shook LA. Yeah. And my bed was on wheels at the time. And I remember shaking and smacking my face against the wall and going, "Oh, what the, what is happening?" And the whole house is shaking. And I was like, "Okay, cool." And then after it stops, all I hear is some dude break out of his door, and then hear the little <laughs> barefoot walk running to my room, and then breaks open my door. I'm like, "What's up?" He goes, "You good?" I was like, "Yeah, I just." Uh, <laughs> I just smacked my face on a wall and he's just standing there just in his underwear. No shirt. Just he's like, all right, cool. And then he runs out and then I hear the footsteps and then they come back and he goes, 
happy birthday and then just runs yeah. out just straight underwear like that's that's my favorite <laughs> that's Joshua a core memory. memory yeah yo definitely core memory. definitely i listen man you know i will tell you one thing i don't think i've ever told you this about being a parent that i never expected is how much fun i would have doing it no and it, i really didn't know how much mm -hmm. i was going to love it I'm starting to have fun now because I've let go yeah. of all my past shit, of all the, you know, the the grooming that you get from your parents of what you think your a parent is supposed to be. Now that I'm just whatever with Bailey and just kind of like not whatever, but I'm still, you know, clean your room, fucking yep. you have a curfew, stuff like that, but not like how I used to be with her. It's starting to get really fun. How long into your relationship with her did you feel comfortable parenting? As a point, I'm sure right off the bat you were like, I can't yeah. tell her what to do. Right. So how far in? Um, I realized early on because Bailey's a Capricorn moon that she needs structure. She's a Gemini, but thank God she has that Capricorn moon because it grounds her. Mm -hmm. So she's like her dad. She is a fucking hot air balloon that just flies around everywhere unless you get a fucking string and you hold her. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I've had to do that with her dad. So I knew that I had to do that with her, but how to do it lovingly yeah. is what I've had to learn because before I was just kind of like, this is how it's going to be, and da, da 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 da, you know, because that's how I've been with everything in my life. Right. Growing up in the streets, that's how you have to fucking be. You like, you Cut know, and dry. literally. Yeah. And with a child, you can't be like that. You know, you have to kind of morph to their emotions and let them kind of figure out who they're going to be. I think Mimi gave me the best advice one time because I had her on such a strict schedule and it was crazy. And Mimi said to me one time, she was like, Bunny, I love you. She's like, but no matter how strict you are with her, she's still going to grow up and be who she wants to yeah. be. Yeah. And I was like, it that was a it was we were in Miami when that happened and it was a light bulb moment that I was like, holy shit, I'm literally here just to guide this child, not to tell her who and what to be. And ever since then, I have completely changed my parenting with her. Yeah, it's just like to be there for that kid. And yeah, just like some the the parents that don't have fun or the kids you see that don't have that relationship with their parents. Yeah, are the parents that don't let their kid have a say in who they want to be. Right. Like they don't understand that. Yes, there are supposed to be boundaries, supposed to be things you tell your kid to do and to not do. But that's what the parenting is for is as right. they get older, you're just supposed to Guide. be there. You got to let them make their own mistakes, yeah. but give them that kind of right. still without rounding. being such a fucking Thor right, hammer, right, right. You did, know, did like... your relationship with jelly allow you because it seems like you must have had the biggest wall up around you oh yeah <clears throat> and this is gonna be two questions one coming from where you came from what i've always one of the other things i've always loved about you is is that your people are your people mm. and I'm you very big on loyalty true sense of family mm -hmm. one where did you learn that from because it clearly wasn't from your home mm -mm. and the streets yeah, you will die in the street. I I know people look at me and they're like, the streets, you know, no, like the streets, but, no, the streets. Literally, the streets, streets, I grew yeah. up in the streets. I fucking the sense of family you learned there was in the streets because Tell me you how. have to have loyalty to stay alive. Yeah, you cannot double cross people in the streets or you will die. Like that's just how it goes. And you know, growing up, especially in the sex sex work industry, once you start turning tricks and stuff like that. You have to have your core group of people that you can count on that are going to be there for you no matter what. You trust those people? Like you, you have to mm -hmm. trust those people. Yeah. It's literally, it's a lifestyle. It's a so life or death type with thing. Like Shelly, I'm assuming that was the, he was the first person that you felt that type of love for. Yes. Did that open you up to be able to have that kind of love with Bailey? Do you know what I mean? Was yeah, it yeah. important that that love came first? Well, I had to trust Jay too. You know, yeah. Jay and I went through a lot of shit the first three years mm -hmm. of our relationship where our trust completely got annihilated and we had to start all over again. Yeah. And I think both of us revisited after, you know, that had happened, the situation had happened and we were just like, look, we're either in this and we're going to lock in and we're going to change you know, try to heal generational trauma together, or we just need to be apart because there's no point in us continuing this if we're just going to destroy each other. Yeah. Right. You know, and we can't do that because we have a child now. So 
I had to just really full on learn to trust Jay no matter what and trust the the universe. Like whatever's meant to be will be. It's already written. So I just need to stop trying to control the narrative and just keep moving forward. And then with Bailey, it's always been a no brainer with her. I've always loved her no matter what, because that's a child. She didn't ask to be put in this situation. She's here, you know, and I've always wanted to make her feel like she was a part of us. Yeah, like it right. was never me, your dad and you, it was, it's always us. Like we are. And like now, if you come in our house and our family, it's us, like we're a little fucking herd and it's like, <laughs> sure you, you know, are. nobody could talk shit about the other one. And yeah. let, you know, we're the only people who are allowed to talk shit to each other yeah. and about each other. But as long as it's just us, it's like, you know, it's like, we're just, it's a I, tight family. I can tell you for me, like with Beth parenting, when we first started, she would say to me, is it okay if I say this to them? Or if this, ha I, instead, she would defer to me a lot. She'd right. be like, I don't agree with that, but right. I that's, have to. That's how Jay and I are. Is that how that yes. you would do it? I don't, I will not make a huge decision or a big decision with Bailey unless I run it by Jay. And Bailey doesn't know this, so I hope she never listens to this podcast. <laughs> but normally the, the ten, nine out of 10 times, if it's no, that's not coming from me. It's coming yeah. from dad. You know, so Interesting. I, I'm kind of it's good cop, bad cop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like if I if like say Bailey wants to fucking her new thing is she wants to go fucking tour Europe or something like that, you yeah. know, and I'm like, I'm hesitant about it. But Jay's like, no, let her go fucking spread her wings, you know. So, uh, of course, we're going to let her, you know, if she wants to do it, we'll let her do it with her friends. Or like if I go to if she wants to do something, I go to Jay and he's like, absolutely not. But I'm like, yes, it's still no. Right. So, you Can know, I ask, how old is, sorry, go ahead, you, how, go ahead. how old is she? She's about to be 16, about so be she's 16. 15. She's okay. going on 32 though. <laughs> kid is so like wise for her years, it's scary. I feel like there's a lot girls, of wisdom in the household. Literally. Girls are well, more like that than boys. Right. Yeah. Boys are a ho, 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 for a long time. <laughs> I'm, yeah. ho, 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 I'm still that. Ho, 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 ho. I'm fucking stupid. Ho, ho, ho. But you want them to keep that, yes. you know, because that's their that's part of their like charm. Ho, 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 ho. Don't point at me like I'm the dumbest <laughs> person here. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever, the two of you, because you, both of you guys, both of you and Jelly have had, I, I don't even know what conventional is anymore, but colorful past mm -hmm. that you're both very honest about. Yeah. So Bailey, obviously. Bailey knows everything with bumper guards. If this that is makes what sense. I'm right. asking. Right. Yeah. So yeah, she knows about her dad. She knows her dad's whole past. Yep. She knows about my past because I'm never going to lie to her. We're on the internet. Yep. And Bailey's huge thing, which I respect it 100%, is just don't lie to me. She's always been like that, even as an eight-year-old. Yeah. She's like, why are you lying to me about my mom? T just tell me the truth. She doesn't like surprises. Mm -hmm. So we learned that with her at a very young age. Like, hey, we're not going to go in and be like, hey, your mom's this, this, and this. But we're going to be like, hey, your mom's not doing well right now. Or like, you know, we massage the situation, but we right. still tell her the truth. Right. So even with in my industry, I... I had to tell her the truth, you know, like, hey, this is what I used to do and I'm not going to be doing that or this is what I do and I'm not going to be doing it forever, you know, because she heard it from her mom, too. Mm -hmm. So her mom, you know, kind of used more colorful words. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, but I'm we're never going to lie to her. And honestly, some people have a problem with that. But our kid is so well rounded, dude. And she what I love about Bailey is she does not judge she That's doesn't huge. judge huge. anybody. And I see these little kids like, ew, this and ew. And Bailey's just like, oh, your mom's gay? I love that. Mm -hmm. You know, like she literally does not judge anybody. And, and I it, think that's a beautiful trait for her. It is. And it's, it. by the way, credit to you guys. Yeah. Can I tell you one thing that I noticed this weekend? Uh, we were, we His birthday was on Sunday. Oh, happy birthday. Oh, thank you. And we went out to dinner and it was so Beth and I, Jacob. Mm -hmm. And when we, we, I, we do a show every Monday night in Vegas. We Aww. have a residency, right? Yeah, I love that. Residency where? At Kimmel's, Kimmel's Comedy Club. So it's every oh, Monday dope. night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to come see you when we're in yes, town. You know, know I got to tell you about the new place we got. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. But I was so proud of you, dude. And I know, and maybe this is part of how you grew up in California. But at the show, you were with your Asian girlfriend. Is there multiple? And your black <laughs> best, your black best friend with your gay best friend. Yeah. Aww. And I was sitting there and like none of this has ever been brought up before, but I was like, this is, 
who we raised. Yeah. A non-judgmental dude. Somebody who dude. loves everybody. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, it was honestly a moment I said to your mom, I'm like, I, we actually, there aren't too many times where I look back and go like, we did something right. Yeah. Because look at this dude uh, yeah. who is accepting everybody and everybody's yeah. here. Yeah. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what your background is. I don't care what yeah. trauma you've gone through. I care that right now in this moment, I can trust you and you're a good person. Yes. That's it. That's yes. all I want from people is that mm -hmm. you're a good person. There's no judgment and I can put my trust in you that if I call, there's 10 toes down, whatever no. I need. Oh, yeah. And I have that five people. That's five, six people. And that's all I need. Yeah, all you I need have those, always had that. I've always had five or six people that no doubt. Same. If I make way. a phone call, yeah? it's 10 toes yeah, down. Always. Even if it's across the world, it's like, yeah. hey, I need this. This is how it's going to work. Mm -hmm. Are you in? It is. When You've do I need to be there? created your own little safe space. Always. Your it, safe bubble. Especially there, through all the trauma that for you know, sure. went through growing up. Just like, just like, you know, losing my best friend. But then also prior yeah. to that, just like being picked on by people who I thought were my friends yeah. and people who I thought were 10 toes down for me. And then going through it to where it was like the only person who's 10 toes down with me right now is me yeah and and figuring that out to then reconnecting with with old friends i mean my best friend right now is a dude i didn't see for a decade yeah and he is a six seven completely I'm covered in tattoos <laughs> jersey man but the dude is is no doubt if i call him and it's pick up and it's like hey yeah. man i i got this i need this i need you here he's yes. like where do i need to be and it's that's loyalty it. I want you is to know. everything i it just took me a couple seconds to figure out 10 toes down <laughs> <laughs> he said it twice. I'm like, 10 toes you, down. You are here burping up. I'm sorry if you can hear that. <laughs> I'm over here down. burping up gravy. Everybody, right. everybody else understood. <laughs> I never eat fucking Cracker Barrel, but my period's about to start, so I splurge. I it's enjoy You know what I meant by 10 toes down. I totally okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a lesson? Because you grew up incredibly people difficult. You, know, in, mm -hmm. you had to overcome a ton of shit. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you learned some very valuable life lessons, right? Mm -hmm. Things you're like, I'm actually glad I learned that. I I always tell everybody when I do talk about my family, it's not to talk bad about them. I agree. It's to always say thank you because that made me who I am. I look at my my sis, my older sister and my younger sister now, and I'm not talking bad about them mm -hmm. in any way, but I see how growing up in that environment, what it did to my little sister, and I see the environment that my older sister grew up with. And I'm just so thankful that I was able to take what happened to me and kind of like make it roses. Whereas they've internalized their trauma and right. kind of it's, it's an excuse. Yeah. You know, how do you take those lessons, which are incredible life lessons mm -hmm. and teach them to somebody without them having to go through you can't. what you went through? Do you know what I'm at? Like, yeah, how you do you, can't. how I do mean, you pass you can, that down? You can tell people, but it's really experience. It's yeah. life experience. You can tell people like, hey, you know, this is this and that is that. But you know how us as humans, it's like, oh, that's a great story. But unless we've been through it and unless we've like, experienced it ourselves, we're not going to be able to you save anybody. Yeah, you can't from, resonate with it because it's yeah. not something that you relate to. Absolutely. Totally. So then let me ask you something, because I did believe I was not one of the parents that when when my kids fell down that I picked them up. Mm -hmm. I was, I mean, obviously, I, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's, that's a, a, you know, I'm an analogy, but basically my theory was I'm not going to be there to pick you up all the time. Right. Like the, it's a cold world bundle up. You have to figure out how to fix this when, when they would have problems at, at school on the playground mm -hmm. and the teachers would go come find us. But I would tell him work, it, work it out. Right. You, you can't find somebody to fix your problems all the time. Yeah. Right. Do you like as a parent, because now instinctually you love this person so much, mm -hmm. you, your instinct is like no pain, no pain, nothing bad, nothing bad. Right. But we both know nothing good comes out of all good. Right. You need. Wisdom comes from experience. No so pain, no gain. How right. do you, knowing where you came from, knowing how you turned out, knowing how much you love this little human, mm -hmm. how do you balance those two things between, because you're also in a situation where you could be like, this person's set up for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. They don't have to know hardship if they don't want to. Yeah. How do you balance that? And how do you keep that young person grounded in the world you're in right now? So hard because it's like, 
you want to protect her, you know, like the minute she comes to me and she has beef with somebody, I'm like, whose mom am I fighting? Yeah. You know, <laughs> like right off the gate, like I get my money on sisters, you, like what's <laughs> happening? You I got my money on you. I got my money on you as well. Yeah. Absolutely. It, and, it, but then I have to take a step back and I have to kind of analyze the entire situation and not that I'm putting blame on her, but I'm like, okay, what was your role in this? Mm -hmm. You know, because I learned jumping to her aid like that, I come to find out that she's really the one being an asshole, yeah. you know? So now I kind of like analyze the entire situation, but I let her go through things because I'm not going to hold her hand through everything. Yeah. She's going to have to fall, but I will be there to, to help her up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and like, absolutely. Kid, you're going to have to learn. You're going to. And she's so damn hard headed. It's, it's hard to to even really kind of answer that because Bailey is so much like me. She's so strong willed and so hard headed that it doesn't matter what anybody tells her. She's going to fucking do what she wants to do and she'll learn from it. But what the amazing thing about Bailey is, is she has so much introspect that when she does learn lessons, she really takes them in and applies them to her life at such a fucking young age, dude. It's almost scary i'm like i wish i had the insight that you did at but, your age but that's she also, didn't have parents who spoke to her honestly yeah, the way yeah. you and jelly it's, speak to her that's such I appreciate a that. that's huge a huge kudos to you guys for being that open that. but also still having set boundaries with your can kid. you speak yeah. on because i feel like we try to leave the door open not you talk to us about Look, parents, no matter how much you think your kid tells you everything. They don't. No, no fucking don't. way. Yeah. No. no, I found that out the hard way yeah, last year. No, yeah, but, yeah. but they'll tell you enough to make you think they tell you right, everything. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, You're little, like, oh, that must be everything. Little manipulative shit. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. But I felt like you knew that the door was always open, yeah? I knew the door was always open. It was just whether or not I choose to go through the open door. Can you talk about, like, did you know people who were scared of their I think fear I is a terrible weapon. parents way. see I think fear is a terrible weapon the parents it's terrible ah, can you like what was it like thought, yeah if, go I ahead. if I think about that like if I think about the kids I grew up with and I think about the households and all the parents that we've met there were never really friendships I made with with that kind of household like if I you think all the way back to elementary school mm -hmm. middle school it might have been one kid that came over to our house we used to pick him up he lived right down the street from us yeah remember him yeah, and his yeah. sister mm -hmm. but they would walk to school every morning because if i'm correct their mother couldn't get out of bed true. to take them mm -hmm. true and so we would drop them off some days we would pick them up sometimes on our way home we would go get them like mcdonald's or something like it was just one of those families that was down the street that we could we could give that little extra helping hand to always, I would tell them and be like, Hey man, but, text me in the morning. Like if you need some, but there was never a household that I can think of that I went into where, where the kid was scared of their parent. Not but, really. Well, as you've gotten older then let me change that question. What has that feeling of confidence? Because I, I be, because I'm sure Bailey feels the same way. The feeling mm -hmm, of confidence yeah. that, you know, you can go like, does that give you, a quiet confidence walking around the world. Does that give you like, cause I know for me, no matter what shit I ever went through, you know, in the back of my head, I knew that my mom and dad supported me mm. a thousand percent. Yeah. That's amazing. It, it, I, I, when I write my journal every day, one of the first things I write down is I'm so grateful to have been surrounded by love my whole life. No, mm. that's huge. So good. It's so huge. Yeah. And I realized that that subtle thing has informed who I am. I've, I have a certain level of confidence because they instilled that consistent love in me. Everything you do is out of love now, too. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just kind of come full circle for you. It, it, it's been so I'm wondering, like, I uh, really tried to both your, your mom is a, the most loving person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> Good Lord. But so what does does I, that? I wouldn't say it's confidence. I wouldn't say it gave me a sense of confidence walking around the world knowing that I had my parents. It was more reassurance. It was more reassurance than anything that knowing that if I got a bad grade or if I messed up somewhere or if I if I you know did something that I safe. regretted, I was all I always had I a safe that spot. Word, right? I always had a safe zone in that house where we could talk about anything hmm. to make sure that I wasn't making dumb decisions in my 
teenagers. Mm. And I, I knew kids that I knew kids that were doing, you know, blow freshman year. I knew kids that were getting into drugs real early. I knew kids who came to school on acid when I was in eighth grade. I may have done that. Uh, <laughs> yo, You're a fucking I, wild I, animal. When, There's yeah. no way I could do that. <laughs> when, I, when, <laughs> I, when I was in eighth grade, there was a kid, I'm not going to, not going to call him out, but there was a dude, a bigger Latino kid. And he used Thanks to- for using the accent. <laughs> it, feels, it feels nice. Yeah. Everybody else hear it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Latino. You nailed it. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and he I'm gonna, I was like, that was a little spicy. Later. It really was. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little flamingo. Yeah. But he would it. come to school. Dude, he would come to school drunk and high, sixth through eighth grade. I remember PE was our first class of the day, and it was 8 a.m. And this dude would take his shirt off and he had blood tattooed across his chest at 12. Mm. And this kid was always just like, always walk around punching lockers. Just a giant eighth grader. I he mean, did not feel safe. Sounds no. like one of my ex-boyfriends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I loved the but, bloods. And, and he did, obviously, like, like there were kids that I saw that had that some sort of rough or turmoil growing up. But- it was always just so rough to see that and to know what I, I was so grateful to know what I had at home. How old were you when you first felt safe? Oh God, fucking 40. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, geez, that's a loaded question. <laughs> I was just realizing hearing him talk because yeah. I really look at like you and Bailey's similarities too is a child that's been raised in love doesn't know any different. Mm -hmm. So that question he can answer it as best he can, but he doesn't know any different because he wasn't raised like the blood that was punching lockers, That's you right. know, or he wasn't raised like how I was. So I don't think they even will realize the home life that they had until they have their own home life, yeah. you know? So it's like, not get, that I'm putting down your perspective yeah. in no, any no, of way. Course, of course. I'm looking at it from Bailey's point of view too, because yeah. if you would ask Bailey the same question, she would have answered it the same way, you know? It really is. The most simple thing you can do as a parent, because the truth is zero cases of perfect parenting. And I would even say yeah, that. Yeah, zero. There's kids who have zero trauma who have fucking trauma. Yes. yes. Yeah, I, I don't know if I worded that the right way because I never exactly wanted- That's exactly You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like her parents did everything they thought was right and then they're fucking in mental institutions there because a, they have some sort of trauma. Something yeah, happened. There was they a didn't feel heard. Who said- you can't compare sucks. Right. Trauma is trauma. Right. Absolutely. It doesn't matter. You, you can be like, well, oh, oh, you got hit as a kid? Yeah, yeah. I can't feel bad about my dad not coming to my game. Right. It doesn't matter. Right. You, you can't were you don't minimize other people's trauma. Cannot yeah. do it. And like, I, I, what when you find out that there's no perfect parent, right? And as a matter of fact, I would say hair. for every positive thing that you instill in your kid, I don't want to say there's a negative to it, but let's just say this. Let's say your kid gets up at seven every morning, gets themselves dressed, brushes their hair, is good with schedules, sits up straight and mm -hmm. quiet, and is a scheduled, well-oiled machine. But guess what? When dinner's at seven and not six, they lose their shit. Right. That's the opposite side of use. Now, him, on the other hand, He's the flowiest dude because that's who I am. Mm -hmm. yeah, but you get on. him into structure and he's going to. Yeah. Like, break why out. are you telling me what to do? Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. there's no such. You have to, as a parent, in my mind, More you're to doing your child. You're doing the best you can right. to figure out who this person is. Yeah. yeah and I'm so going really. to instill in you what I think is important. I can't do anything else. That's why the love and the patience and the safety, those are things yeah. that you can provide. And those are that's a pure in the plus side. Yeah, absolutely. All I, you can do is make your kid want to be a good human. Yep. That's all you can do. Instill in them whatever traits you think it is that a good human represents uh -huh. and just try to hope that they'll go out into the world and not turn into Jeffrey Dahmer, you know? <sighs> With my glasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, they're a little more yellow tinted than Jeffrey's, yeah, right? Yeah, Jeffrey's were a little- They were like, Jeffrey's were like sun, like half sunglass, half not. Yeah, yeah. Th these, are, um, these are my, I'm in a really strong- half Hunter S. Thompson, half Big Lebowski stage of I my love life. That. Oh, Bunny, I'm I love it for you. I'm in a I'm in such a um gratitude peaceful. Peaceful um drug induced. 
<laughs> lots of drugs right now. Um, but just but is, is it really drugs? You're it's using mushrooms. Mushrooms and I had acid that one time. That one. <laughs> <laughs> it was in Atlanta like three weeks ago. Oh, it was hilarious. We were about to go on stage. I'm like, let me get some of that acid. Oh no, man. that was wait, hold on. You're missing like four yeah. other parts to that. What Ten are you talking session. about? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I yeah, but I'm in such a a peaceful. This is why this particular. I'm so fascinated with with people that I respect and love about how their journey brought them to where they are. Mm. Did you ever think not only that you wanted to be a mom, but that you'd be equipped to be able to do it? I know a lot of people who grew up the way you grew up were like, I'm not having fucking kids. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that, that's me. <laughs> yeah. Literally, I've yeah. never, my thing was I wanted to be a rock star's wife. I wanted my own business. I never wanted the white picket fence. I never wanted kids. I, I've been pregnant. I've lost babies. I had an abortion. You know, we'll talk about all that in my book, but it's like, um, I never wanted to have children of my own because I never wanted to ever be a reason why a kid turned out fucked up or to ever inflict you trauma were on them. Scared? Were you scared? You were like, this is the only thing I've ever seen. How do I know I'm not going to be that? And I just literally, I just, the appeal of children has never been, right. you know, it's never been appealing to me. I've never been that type of woman, but with Bailey, I still I don't know if I feel like I'm a mom. I don't ever think of it like that. I don't think like I'm a mom. Yeah. You know, I think of it as like this is my little fucking bestie, and yeah. like we're just fucking kicking ass through life. And you know, she pisses me off every now and then, but other than that, fucking, we're, you know, I want to watch her grow up to be this beautiful woman. It's literally crazy because I've been in her life since she was seven, and she's li we're planning her sweet sixteen now. Amazing, and it's just so crazy to me because I'm like, God, this is like a relationship you yeah. know i'm like this is like for like i'm in this child's life for the rest of her life whether she likes it or not you know so awesome. yeah so it's like it's i don't know i've never really taken the time to sit there and just be like hey i'm a mom you know so, so since you said like you know you there was something that told you you never wanted kids because of the way you grew up but and you said that you never felt the love like the love you felt when you got together with jay mm -hmm. was that was knowing he had kids did that somewhat throw you off or did it make you mm. want to step into that role even more because you wanted it to work as much as it did um i don't think i've ever like planned anything out in my life but i knew that <laughs> bailey i really haven't like I, I knew what i wanted in life and i've gone out and i've manifested it like i've always it. Yep. visualized it yep. but i've never been like this is a, a game plan and I'm going to attack it this way. Right. Like I never, I didn't think of it that way. When I got with Jay, he had um, another woman pregnant that he had been in a relationship for off and on for 10 years. They had a toxic relationship. I absolutely love that baby mama. I think she is a fucking awesome woman. And yeah. I'm so thankful that she's in her life. And we raise these babies together. She raises his son, Noah, and just does a fucking amazing job with it. And I'm so thankful for her. Um, and, Bailey was the situation at the time because her mom was in such shambles and right. her life was in such shambles. So when I saw that, it was like a no brainer. I was just like, I was like, you need a lawyer. Cool. I'll hire one for you. Mm -hmm. You need a house. All right, cool. I'm going to get that for you. It was never me. Like, I'm going to do this just so I could be a part of these kids life. Cause I didn't even know if I was going to be with Jay. And I've even told, I even told him in the beginning, like, Hey, I, you know, if you and I don't work out, I still want to make sure that these kids have a ch th this child, not these kids. This child has a chance at life with you. It was super important to you, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because you know I know what it's like to be that little yeah. girl yeah. who's in a fucked up household that nobody will help her in. You yeah. know, so I wanted to give her the chance that I wasn't presented. You're you're all about w not whether it's going to be hard on you or hard on them. You're all about what's right from wrong. Right. Absolutely. That's really what yeah. drives your your, yeah. your moral compass. Do you remember? Very Aquarius. <laughs> the first time she said, I love you. The first time she said, I love or you. Or called you mom. Do you remember either one of those? I don't remember the first time she said, I love you. I Just so I can, I can give you guys an example of Bailey and I's relationship. Because this kid has given me shit. I'm you know? sure. Yeah. I'm sure. And I remember there was one time she was like, she was in a dress and she was just sitting all crazy and she was burping and she was just like, it was, I couldn't believe it. I literally was like looking at this little gremlin and I was like, <laughs> okay. And I was like, Bailey, you need to sit up. I was like, you need to act like a lady. And she looked at me and she goes, I ain't no lady. And I was like, 
Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> and literally to this day, that was like a defining moment with her and I because she was like, oh, okay, then I, I do need to be a proper lady. And like I started teaching her. I think the coolest thing with Bailey was, and I'm trying so hard not to like shit on her mom when no, no, I no, say no, these totally things. Yep. Um, when we got Bailey, she didn't know how to brush her hair. She didn't know how to brush her teeth. She didn't know how to use certain things properly. She didn't know how to even bathe. You know, like that's how bad it was. And through the years, I have gotten to teach her how to be such a young lady. That's and that awesome. has been, I mean, a hooker teaching a girl how to be a lady. Like, yeah. this is crazy, <laughs> right? Is, wasn't that a yeah. Richard Gere movie? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. What, that must have been super fulfilling, though, because it was so like thanks, though. something right? you didn't get, but got to be able to share an experience right. with. I love that. And and now when you see Bailey, she like smells good all the time. Her hair is done. She's like a freaking little makeup artist. And like, she just like dress is so cool and it's like it's really cool to sit back and watch and see, be like i did that you know yeah, like yeah, so yeah, if i was gonna ask you and but I, remembering but, the first time she said i love you i don't i don't remember that. i remember the first time you called your mom mom i feel like it was early this dude one of my favorite moves he used to make as a kid he's always been a pretty uh, sensitive uh, no yeah you can yo, say when he was eight he he cried tears of joy when Aww. he was happy about something. He was a like he. I was a big tears of joy you're guy. You're Pisces, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm, you're, very, you're, I'm emotions. You're yeah. An emo Nemo. Big emotional. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. But I remember, and he used to, when he would talk to you, whether you were sitting, he would put his hand on your face and no. talk to you. He'd be like, "Dad, can we?" Or whatever you would want to say, he would make Don't sure you he touched that? you. Oh, that little hand. Oh. Get the fuck that hand. I know. Listen, that's your right hand. Don't touch me with that on my face. <laughs> I know you're right. Hey, I'm ambidextrous. Yeah, you want yeah. Nobody jerks off with both hands. No. Oh. Hey, you know. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. It's the old Indian burn. <laughs> no, not, not at the same time. What are we talking about? Hey, listen, if I had a dick, I would. I'd be doing it all. You go both? Are you playing Ooh, hand jobs? I would fucking you scissor. Go. I would do it all. You Wait, going hand jobs on the dick? Hey, listen, dun, dun, if I had dun, a dick, I would be weird with it. Hand jobs on the dick is wild. I would get weird with it. <laughs> listen, I do. You guys are lucky. Listen. It's outside of your body, so you guys get to do whatever. Hand job on the, on the dick is wild. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one time Easy I jerked comment. off with my left hand, I almost felt like I should put a ski mask on. Why is that? Jay can't do it either. And I'm, I'm like, just, I'm I, like, come on, switch it up. You know, like I let's just, fucking get crazy. Here's the deal. I'm going to give you uh, the uh, the best analogy I can give you. If I go oh to God. a steak restaurant, okay, and I know I like this rib, we're comparing dicks to steaks. Well, let me just okay. I mean, <laughs> me, I mean meat to meat. Oh. I guess it kind of makes sense. <laughs> take, take take the trip with me. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if I go to a if I go to a restaurant and I know I like that ribeye, and I fucking love a ribeye, and I'm not gonna go and order a cod. Yeah. Right? Because I'm going to be disappointed with something that I know that I love. Yeah. I know how good I am to myself. <laughs> Why do I want to fuck it up? You know what I mean? I'm not I mean, practicing. a little strange. Why? I was going to say, it's like a stranger. It's like, it's like you're strange. That's what I'm the, saying. I'm not used I, to the left hand motion. I felt like I should put a, a ski mask name? on like I was getting robbed. Yeah. <laughs> Punch myself Cover in the gut. Cover your eyes. Yeah. You don't know whose hand. <laughs> Try to get it to come in from a different angle. Yeah, yeah. Like you don't know which hand it's coming and, through. And talk with a different voice. Give me that dick. I mean, maybe a little more feminine. I mean, or whatever you like. Oh, yeah. He probably shouldn't have gone as deep. I mean, we don't want it to be like well, the, de we don't want it to be like like the demons Jackson. when you ordered pizza. Oh, we don't. Gosh. Gosh. Can I tell you? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so you the, sat up like you had the craziest I've secret to tell. Doing some research into spirit guides. Mm -hmm. I. I knew you. you he fucking, this guy thinks he's the avatar. No, over I love here. it. Like, <laughs> I've been doing some research into spirit guides. I'm so curious. And they're so real. So we all have them. I started to talk out loud to my spirit guide and be like, "I really would like to meet you. I'm open. Basically, like I'm open for business." Isn't it great when they show up and their names like Tom? Okay, ready for this? Yep. I show. I I was doing mushrooms. <laughs> Shocker! It always starts with that. <laughs> and. <laughs> I, this is like two nights after I had done all the research and decided I'm open for business. When I say more energy and different, like every couple seconds, I'd feel something weird. And I was reading about it afterwards in some dark. I was reading about it mm -hmm. that when you do drugs, you're opening yourself up uh, in such a and crazy drugs. way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But- I, it was almost like the spirit guys were going, oh yeah, you want to be open? 
we're all coming through. And it was the craziest ride. I was in a hotel room with him, which was weird. Yeah. But I was I, not on mushrooms. Yeah. yeah it <laughs> do was, you so, do mushrooms? Oh, I do mushrooms. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking a break for a little bit because okay. I, had, I had a couple uh, weeping under my blanket instances. So, <laughs> but you needed that. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Who knows? <laughs> well, it wasn't like a sad weeping. It's a, uh, didn't think I was going to be this high weeping. Oh, that's yeah, the yeah, worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you just got to kind of ride it out. Yeah. But yeah, I was, I was sitting there with him and at one point, quiet. Dead silent. His eyes are closed. He even might have headphones on, hat down. Mm -hmm. And he just reaches over to me. What did you, I even forget what you said. I reached over and I grabbed him. Because this is, I was saying it out loud, but I felt like I needed to touch him to protect him. And I just said out loud, if you're not here for good or mm -hmm. to help, I need you to leave. Yeah, always. No, he thought I was talking to him. I thought he was ah. talking directly ah. to me. <laughs> and I was like, what? I'll see you later. <laughs> I was like, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to them. He was to like, go. Oh. And he was like, where are you going? And I'm like, you're you like, just he's told like, me to he's leave. Like, you're my trip partner. Come yeah, back. Yeah, dude, I need you in the room. <laughs> yeah. You had to hold you down to, down to earth. That's I want to end this with one question for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing you hope Bailey gets from you and one thing you hope she doesn't. That's oh, such a good one. I'm so bad with on the spot questions I like that. Um, I can tell you, I'll answer what my answer was for yeah, him yeah. so you can think of it. Yeah. It actually was the same thing. Mm -hmm. I hope he gets kindness and grace and in putting happiness and joy out. I think that's super important. Yeah, absolutely. At the same time, I would say it's also my weakness because I, I've, I'm too nice. Right. I put other people in front of me. I, I let, I do things that I don't really want to do to make somebody else happy. Mm -hmm. That's hey, when you say that I've grown since the last time we spoke, mm -hmm. that's been the biggest part of my growth, which is I'm still night. I'm still, I'm kind. I'm not nice. Well, just remember Josh, no is a full sentence. Yes. And I've had to teach my husband that too. Yes. Because he's just like you. He will fucking spread himself thin and be miserable about it. Yes. You know, like just because everybody needs him doesn't mean that, they're yeah. allowed that access yeah. to him. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's also really important. Like you taught me this early on and then I, I learned it a lot more like working TV production and stuff like that. It is knowing your worth is so important. Yeah, oh, and absolutely. Like, I may have been a PA for seven years and at the bottom of that, at the bottom of that food chain. And, but for me, it was always like, I may be the bottom of the food chain, but if you think about it. Who made you feel like you were at the bottom of the food chain? Bigger. bigger That's what you need yeah. to point out. Yeah. Bigger Who made was, me feel like I was the PA? Yeah, somebody and it was, had it to was, have made you feel it like was, that. It was some EPs, it was some bosses, and it was yeah. some other things. But my realization came with- But that's projection because they see- A hundred percent. Your your potential. Yeah. and But for, for me, for me, it was- I learned really early on that, yo, none of this stuff would get done if I wasn't here. Absolutely. If me and my PAs and my people weren't on this set, your execs would have to go get coffee by themselves. They, they would have to, to they would have to go do things for themselves. Nothing would get done. You're Nothing young, would run the way it runs. You're a young, good looking dude with great energy. And Older greater. men are gonna fucking <laughs> oh, automatically 100%. be on the defense. Insecure. Because they, you know, they yeah. see that this young buck is this young bull is in their arena, yeah, you know? Yeah. So you have to understand that a lot of that is projection. And anytime anybody puts anybody down, that's on a, I don't want to say lower level, but is doing a job that maybe doesn't pay as much as theirs. That's projection. Yeah. That's being rude because yeah. by the way, pay attention who those people are. Those are not. Yeah. You don't want those people in your life. Anyways. You don't want those. No, yeah. there, there was a big one for me there when I was, uh, when I worked on a TV show right before I went to Panama in 2022. Mm -hmm. Remember I told you there was a, a production manager who spoke to me a certain way oh, three times yeah. in a matter of an hour where he spoke down to me and talked to me like I was a kid when he was looking up at me while he was talking to me. Yeah. And I was like, well, there you go. Yeah. And legitimately two days later. I had gotten a call to go do be a key PA in South America, in Central America to go shoot a show. And I remember going up to him and I was midway through my shift and I was like, hey man, I'm leaving. And he was like, what? I go, I just got offered a different job. I don't want to be here with you and your shitty attitude for the rest of the night. I'm going home. Y'all, I'll come get my check from your wife tomorrow morning. Like yeah. I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it because I know what I'm worth and I know that my time could be spent better elsewhere instead of taking shit from you at yeah. midnight can I when tell you nobody dude, here? Can I tell you just as a dad? I've never heard that story. I'm super proud that you stood up for yourself, too. Yeah, this is what absolutely. this is it's because you know the one thing we never know as parents is how they are out in the world. Right. I yeah, never yeah. I'm lucky actually that I get to see that. Yeah. 
But most parents don't get to see mm -mm. who their kids have truly become. Right. It's for me one of the biggest blessings of this right now. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, he's become the person the person that we had hoped that he was going to yeah, become. And that's amazing for you guys. That says a lot about you Crazy. guys as parents. Tell me. Tell I think me. I would want Bailey to get my um, my discernment. I can read people's energy really well. Yeah. So I, I know how to choose who and what I don't want in my energy. And Important. I hope that she learns that from me. I also hope she does not get my stubbornness because mm -hmm. I learned a lot of hard fucking lessons uh, because I one maybe didn't want to admit that I was wrong or yep. didn't want to hear anybody else's advice. So I hope she learns how to take, you know, constructive criticism from people or constructive advice from people and knows how to apply it better than I did. Taking everything with a grain That's of salt a is a good important. one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't realize till you're older that criticism doesn't mean that's the truth. No. Right. Right. No, 100%. not at all. But it doesn't mean that's the truth. Right. It just means that that that's person that that person's opinion. Right. Yeah. And you can't control that person's mm -mm. opinion. No. I I one of maybe and I I'd love for you to learn this and this comes with age is that it's so um it's such a blessing to learn, man. Oh, I can't control anybody but myself. Oh yeah. So yeah. so I can't control, for example, I can't control how many people buy tickets. I can control how good my comedy is. Absolutely. And right? that in return makes people want to buy tickets. That's it. Yeah. But if I'm focusing on the other thing, I'm not focusing on the thing that I can control. You're right. focusing on what you don't have rather than what you have. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, and you've, you've been doing a lot, a lot recently, though. You've, you've been telling me a lot about how you've really started to turn a leaf, turn a new leaf and go, I got to stop looking at. At, at what I don't have and harping over it instead of looking at all the amazing stuff I already have Dude, currently in my life. Every yes. morning I get up and write a list of the things that I'm grateful for. Absolutely. And the top three in that list is always health, love, family. Mm -hmm. Now it changes every morning how I'm feeling, but those are the three things in my life that if everything went away, you still I, have, which are the things that I covet the most. Yeah. Health, love, mm -hmm. family. Yes. And, and those are like, things that money can't buy. Or can't be taught. Right. Like it's all it's all things that just you, you know, you you learn with each other. Yeah. Bunny, this was better than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. It was amazing. I I thank you guys I, for having me. Thank you for coming on. It was this was Anytime. outstanding. I, Next time I'll bring Jay when he doesn't have a mouthful of fucking. Yeah, man, I, yeah, and I yeah. understand. <laughs> I, listen, the way you two carry yourselves. You know, and the way you reach back, which is what we're all supposed to do, mm -hmm. is just like, it's so, when people ask me about you guys a lot. No. And I, they're like, what are they? I go, nothing but lies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just actually, really I'm, trip them out. I'm like, actually, that's a fat suit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do it. Do it. He zips it. He zips it all. Do it. Oh he zips it off and he just comes out like yeah, he dude, zips it off. That would be amazing. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a fat suit. You didn't dude, know that? Yeah, he zips it off. The awesome. new rumor lately about us is that we're in the Illuminati. Like it's been the craziest. I'm like, I'm, take me along. I was like, I'm glad you guys think we're rich enough. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank How you. How do I get in that group? Yeah, no, I, no yeah, it's crazy. Dude. So yeah, start that rumor about the fat suit. Please. That's, that's so that's funny. Yeah. I am oh gonna start no, that. No, please do. He's actually not that big. What? <laughs> yeah, Damn. really, he's like a twig inside. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Man, I think we should all just get together one day and be like, yeah. what rumors do we want to start about each other? Oh, it would be so fun. We should just have a whole podcast about like just talking shit. Oh. Like, remember when we did this and this and this and then put it out and people will be like, they really did this. Yo, that is amazing to put out a 100% fake real podcast. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> Just control the narrative of what you want out in the universe because people believe anything. Yes. Yeah. So I could literally be on here and say, I shit antlers. And people would be like, she shit a fucking antler. Mm -hmm. Like, and it'll spread. It's like telephone. It's I've crazy. I felt like I've shit antlers before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Listen, that... I did this morning. Yeah. It felt like it. It was a, it was a buckhorn. It was, yeah, it was bad. I was. I was, I, man, listen, <laughs> we don't need to talk about your poop escapades. I don't want to, I don't, listen, we don't need to get I into love that. talking about poop. Oh, can I, <laughs> this is my favorite. Whenever, and holes. whenever <laughs> I, whenever I poop and it, and it's, it's in the hole and out of the water, I always take Those a picture are the favorite. and send so it. There's Jane. four it's people that get it. It's called a flagpole. I never knew that. Me neither. I when didn't it's, know that. When it touches the when it touches the bowl, but it sticks out the top of the water, it's yeah. called a flagpole. I thought it was a turtle. Are you using No, that? turtle is when it's poking out of your butthole. I just know the ghost poop. 
You know. <laughs> oh, oh, where you poop but don't like where you wipe and, and there's nothing there. there and then you look in yeah, the toilet yeah, and yeah. it's gone. Like where does it go? Well, I've never had a disappearing poop before. <laughs> but like, it might be the best magic show of all time. And no, it's crazy. It's like now you it's see it now you know. Something comes out of your butthole. Yes, plop. And but then there's gone. no wipe and there's no no fucking turd. Yeah, it's a mind fuck. Yeah, it's gonna happen to you now. Oh, I hope. And when it does, it does please text me. I have to know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need to know. Can I tell you the <laughs> the only good thing? Because I went vegan for like ninety days. I like to try everything. Yeah, yeah. Right? The only thing, good thing about vegan- You will shit like a motherfucker. But the poops come out of your butt like they're on a water slide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They come shooting yeah. out. No. And there's no wipe. Yeah. No, it's like the cleanest. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. Jay and I did the vegan thing too. And he was you like- You did? I, oh yeah. We did. We went vegan for probably, I'd have to say- Wait, when? A year When he lost all that weight in 2017. Yeah. That was one of the main ways that he lost all that weight. He worked out a lot, but he also, um, we did vegan. We went 100% vegan. It's wow. such a, I got to tell you, looking back, mm -hmm. it's what a terrible 90 days that was. Yeah, I see it. Awful. And you don't get enough fucking protein. No. And it's like, there's a lot. I, and I'm not the talking the shit worst. about I vegans. Am. I'm talking shit. <laughs> I am too. also, yes. The absolutely. worst farts. Like a vegan fart it is a- Oh, wet. Oh, and then it's like, uh, I think somebody just let out some nerve gas. <laughs> They're, yeah, it's so bad. It is a, <laughs> yeah. it's like a bad- it's You aggressive. can taste it. You really, it, because here's why you taste it. Here's my theory. It's wet. It gets in the air I particles, know. so it's kind of thick. Yes. Oh. No, for sure. You've, done, to, a, you've done an unfortunate amount of research on vegan farts. So <laughs> I, I did. I think he had them. Listen. You, That's I, wisdom. I, I Dutch ovened your mom Is for it three months. <laughs> Oh, I Wait, used for three months, you've been Dutch oven mom for I'll your kill entire Jay. marriage. If he ever Dutch ovens me, he's never, he's tried to. <laughs> you guys have never smelled a fart until you've smelled the jelly roll fart. I can only assume. He I has the cutest imagine. butthole, though. His butthole is so cute. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to be your reaction. I, I, Jay's hilarious. butthole is the cutest butthole yeah, I've ever how, seen. What's the, how? Okay. <laughs> what He's got it? these big old, just meaty cheeks. He got meaty cheeks, and these it's just the tiniest pink butthole I've ever seen. So, it's so, so perfect. I like the color of your bracelet. I, really? <laughs> a He's bit, got a cat a nose bit, butthole. A <laughs> <laughs> little bit Taylor. Is it like a little, like, like, little bit is, baby, baby pink? It, so is, it, is it cold and damp like a cat's nose? I mean, I'll lick it every. <laughs> I'll lick it any time. If he gives me those spreads, those my conchos, I will lick I, it at any time. I have never. I don't know what I would consider to be a cute butthole. I think I'm they sure you think your look... wife's butthole is cute. Don't you can answer it. Don't look at me when you say it, though. You freak, <laughs> staring in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, you're fucking weird. It's, <laughs> it's, I'm not sure cute is the word, but I'm. I'm here for it. Are you a boob? <laughs> are you a boob? Are you a boob wild. ass or a vagina guy? What is your thing? Ass. What are you? Ass. Okay, so you a butthole comes with an ass. Uh, yeah. From what, what I'm told. What do you love about the ass? Just the cheeks or the I, hole? I love the cheeks. I've said this before. When I'm having, <laughs> he's really thinking I love, about it. I love it. everything. I love everything. Do you like to see hole? the wave go yeah, out? My girlfriend and come doesn't back as much, in, but you know, uh, that, yeah. I, I mean, I do. But sh there's not there have been a lot of exploration of the forbidden land gotcha. if you know what i mean but the I think forbidden that's why, land what are you I in think the that's hobbit why people love, yeah kind of i think that's why people love buttholes because they are forbidden land yes. nobody's just walking around with their butthole hanging out you got to dig for it can you i know? tell you <laughs> 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 can i tell you i remember when this dude first before i had licked a butthole i was like i don't know <laughs> and he was like what do you mean i'm like well there's how could it taste like anything else besides pennies yeah, right <laughs> he was like it pennies he goes it doesn't taste like poop it tastes like pennies yeah, yeah. and i was like what do you mean and this is how he explained Tangy. it to me he said the butthole is the body's vanilla extract and i go what do you mean he goes it's the opposite because vanilla extract smells terrible smells great but tastes terrible right but the butthole is the opposite you yeah. smell it you're like i don't want a piece of that and you taste it you're like i'm in as long as it's clean yeah yeah if you got some Fermunda cheese and a little dingleberries, I, 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 I would think that it would not be great. Yeah. No. no. Yeah. This and there is zero forgiveness for like Oh, that. that's the worst. <laughs> if you know your butthole's about to get licked, you need to wash. For sure. Yeah. I think that's 
But I mean, what if you're in the heat of the moment and it's been a long day? Then you go, give me two seconds. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. Rode, and like if you rode the bus. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> you rode the bus yeah. to get there. Or yeah, yeah, you gonna, if, you, if, you're riding, <laughs> if you're riding your bike to your dick appointment, you should be showering before. You enter yeah. the man's First of the all, if you're bed. riding a bike to a dick appointment, you shouldn't be getting dick. <laughs> yeah. All right? Like, just, they need to be coming to you. They need to be coming to you. Okay? God. Wait a second. You know how, Ladies, like, we got to draw some fucking boundaries somewhere, okay? <laughs> Please. You know how, like... Do not ever ride the bike for dick. You put your feet in the water and the little fish clean it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you do that with your bottle? Not if you want one going up. Is that bestiality? That's an interesting line. question, actually. Is it worse that they eat the dead things off your feet or your butthole? I mean, do you want a goldfish up the hoot, Nanny? That's what I was gonna say. Well, what I, if the gold what if the I, fish ends up the, the lodge? Well, you're yeah. not you're not parting the Red Sea for it. You're just putting it in. But there. if you're squatting over it, that's a good point. Like it's you don't not want to be like the dude at the baseball game. Don't be the dude at the baseball game squatting over the fish. Oh. Your penis is hanging your penis, out. Your penis. <laughs> I can see your penis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I listen, dude. I'm, oh I God. don't think I've ever had a butthole conversation with you before. <laughs> no, Sorry. you and I generally, it's like the one thing you and I don't talk about are our sex lives. You yeah. know, because which is I'm, good. Because I'm having nice... sex with your mom, which is why I don't talk yeah, about it. Yeah, it's a nice here. boundary to have. I feel like have, you guys sure. are a lot closer than most father and sons yes. because, I yeah. mean, you're literally tripping balls while he's laying next to you. Yes. So it's like most sons and fathers aren't doing Sometimes that. Sometimes we're tripping balls right next to each other. There's I, nothing wrong with sex conversations. I understand wanting the boundaries. But, you know, everybody does it. We, I will tell you, you know, we've been touring together for a year. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't let him get his own hotel room. He has to stay in the hotel room with me. So you got to whack off next to your dad? <laughs> There's a bathroom for that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bathroom for that. <laughs> but, but like, Josh, what, you got to whack hotel off next Or the hotel to him? lobby bathroom. You get a little more privacy. Oh, fuck not off all the, the way. lobby. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck off all the way. That's kind of hot. <laughs> I can't. I there might be a way. fetish you for that. You jerk off public? No, that's the public. Is not, the it's a, it's a quiet. Public. Well, I have, I'm not saying I'm gonna do it. I'm saying, but if I'm gonna do it, I don't feel like doing it in the room with you. Well, the, listen, don't I, let him shame you. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, you know what's crazy is every time I get up to go to the <laughs> bathroom, every time I get up to go to the bathroom, he's like, "You going to jack off?" And I'm like, "Would you fucking relax?" Every time, every time, I'm like, "Yo, I'm just going to take a shit." Like Can me. a man when shit Haley, in peace? When Haley gets up to leave anywhere, I'm like, "You going to poop?" Like every time, dude. We could be at we were at Are Bert, you? we were at Burt Kreischer's. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, oh I will tell you the and how close we are. Yeah, you has, guys have something special. Yeah, it absolutely. has made this like it, I'm, like I said, it has made this time. Like I'm sure when you guys get to bring when Bailey comes, yeah, it is such. You know what I had realized because I've been doing this for a minute. Mm -hmm. I and I was I was on my own for three or four days a week, right? Mm -hmm. I was living a life by myself. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sharing my life or experience. I was having all these experiences alone. And when he started coming out, I was like, "Oh, this is like that's what life's about. This is what life is. Mm -hmm. I'm sharing these experiences with one of the most important people in my life. Yeah, and like that." It, it, it's been such a huge shift. I, I I could say it a million times. I've never been happier in my life. I love it. Yeah, I'm super happy. I do have one more question for you, just at the end of it. Okay. What would be, what would be best your best parenting advice for someone or some either a father or a mother who's stepped into a role oh, like you stepped question. into? Um, don't force anything. You can't force a kid to love you. You can't force a relationship. Like. When I, for, I, when I first got with Jay, I wouldn't hug Bailey unless she said it was okay. Mm -hmm. I always asked for her permission. Like, can I hug you? And I still, to this day, will ask her, can I hug you? And she'll say no. You know, like, mm -hmm. no, I don't want to be hugged. You know, and I just think that that's so important that, you know, everybody wants to be, you know, the, the mom or stuff like that. And it's just like, that will come when they trust you and they feel safe. Mm -hmm. Don't force it because they're going to end up resenting you and hating you. That was an amazing answer. Yeah. Super Thank insightful. You. And Absolutely. truth. I Correct. watched yeah. Beth do the same thing. Yeah. yeah. She put in the I work. I love Beth. That's why I love Beth so much. She reminds me of myself, like her spirit in general. Yeah. You guys, <clears throat> and people from the outside are going to be like, how is this possible? Yeah. You two are 
<laughs> similar in so in many a lot ways. Of ways. Yeah. Yeah. Aww, <laughs> the inner strength. She's a great that, woman, so yes, she I'll is. take it. The inner strength that both of you have mm. is, and the ability to pick yourselves up without fanfare, without anybody being like, oh, you need a pat on the back because you picked yeah. yourself up? Mm -hmm. No, I don't need that. Yeah, I'm going to pick myself up because I'm a grown person and I'm doing you're it not me. going to knock me down. Yeah, yep, absolutely. And so I, I recognize that in both of you. It's pretty amazing. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for Thank having we me. We do miss your dog. I know Chachi's getting his butthole washed right now. A uh, cute butthole? Yeah. Who's big. got a cuter? Who's got, he does have a big butthole. It's crunchy. Yeah. <laughs> it's crunchy. It's a little yeah. dry. He does. Jay's is way cuter. I know you're going to ask me that. Yeah. Yeah. His it's is probably moist. stays Pink moist. And moist. Yeah. yeah. His Jay is exposed to the air all Chachi's the time. Chachi's is just crunchy. Yeah. Yeah. Crunchy well, butthole. Sounds, same with Indiana Jones. Not the movie guy. <laughs> oh. My my dog's name is oh, Indiana Jones. Oh, I was Jones. like, damn, Harrison Ford. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I will say, he's he's old as hell right now. He might have a like, crunchy butthole. I'm not going to lie. Harrison Ford's got a crunchy butthole. I was really upset. I mean, he's old as hell. He might have a crunchy bubble. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, out of context, <laughs> when you just say Indiana Jones, <laughs> I, was, I, was I really saw concerned. your face like, what? <laughs> yeah. You're going to drop that bomb? Uh, <laughs> I was really concerned. I was like, let the man go out with some dignity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But also, my question would have been, how do you know he's got a crunchy butthole? I listen. That's my next question. I was not even going to question it. I have to tell you, I, and I'm just guessing, I think as you get older, your butthole gets less crunchy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, because I think you have less well, control over what's coming in and out of it. So it might, in and out? Well, just out. Whoa, but Jesus. Probably in a diaper. Yeah, you might get a little damper. A little, little moist. You said in and out, just out. You you said as you get older, you got to worry about more things going in your butt? Yeah, you're I right. I mean, colonoscopies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe your prostate every now and yeah, then. Yeah, yep, like, yep. You don't wanna... Anyways, <laughs> we love you. Please, love you. next time you're in Vegas. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me know. Absolutely. We would love to grab some dinner with you. Yeah. Um, And yeah. That's it. You got anything else? No, but uh, do you anything yeah, you want to tell anything the people you wanna, what you're doing? Anything, anything you, you want to tell there? them? You guys can find me anywhere online. XOMG. It's Bunny Bunny XO. Or come listen to my podcast, Dumb Blonde Podcast. Drops every Wednesday, and I love you guys. The, I want to tell you her podcast. You know, it, uh, some interview podcasts they're monotonous with their guests or their topics. Yours is not, I appreciate and. You. Like I said, not you're you get people to talk because you're so open and honest and you listen. Yeah, I appreciate And so it. I I really I don't listen to too many podcasts. No. I listen to Huberman and I listen to you. Oh, what a fucking <laughs> it's broad wait. spectrum. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's a whole different It's like Indiana Jones's butthole. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All right, everybody. We love you. Bye you guys. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. What are you tell them? I got I, Tell them. Well, I got two things, actually. I also want to give you another flower up top no. right at the very end. Uh, it's very inspiring because you definitely made it apparent because you just never wanted to be known just as Jay's wife. Mm -hmm. And I find that inspiring. because fighting that. Because I've been fighting that my entire life of being just his son. Yeah. So I find it very inspiring and very motivating. Just to, keep building to your know, path. Yeah, to know that there is separate. a way out of the shadow. Oh, um, there is. So that, that's a role model for me. So thank you for that. You I really this. appreciate that. Everybody, go tell somebody you love them today. Do something nice for someone. We'll see you all next week. Later. Thank you.